Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 71 of Podcast vs. Enemies, a Destiny Massive Breakdowns show. We are continuing our sandbox vibe check this week as we wait for Solstice next week. My name is Impetus, and today I am joined by my lovely co-hosts, Court and St. Kabir. Court, how have you been, and what have you been up to this past week? Hello, lads. Nice to be back again. Um, not much over on the Destiny side. A little bit of Catalyst kind of uh, uh, tick box checking. Uh, Wicked Implement and Malfeasance Catalyst done for this season. Uh, knocking out some kind of nebulous seasonal challenges as usual. Uh, but mostly off game, been playing DMZ and replaying God of War 2018 on the PC. I think I'm pretty much almost finished. Uh, so I'll wrap that up by the time this episode comes out. Lots of fun. Um, Saint, how are you doing? Yeah, I've been pretty good. Uh, ran the Wicked Implement mission a few more times, helping some friends get their exotic. I got to tell you, running that mission with attrition modifier going is not a... It's not a great time, I wouldn't say. Uh, a little bit difficult. But nevertheless, we're getting it done. We're getting some clears. Did a little last wish farming. Kind of rounded that out uh, right before reset. And then just one regular run with the clan. A uh, little bit of Iron Banner. Uh, not doing two, two full resets for the shader. But, you know, I, I enjoyed the the session that I did play. Uh, other than that, I've been, playing, I've been playing through Fallout 4. Which I know is pretty old, but I never... Never finished that game, never beat that game, uh, and I, th I think I'm about halfway through that main quest line, if I had to guess, but yeah, definitely been enjoying that. Looking forward to the Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart coming out in a couple weeks on PC. It's been a really long time since I have touched the Ratchet & Clank series. Very, very nostalgic. Uh, lots of fun weapons and stuff. Uh, Impetus, how about you, man? I think, oh man, what did I play Ratchet & Clank on? Oh, it's the the PSP. That was my first okay. ever gaming platform i got that for christmas and yeah i had a ratchet and clank game wow it's it's it too has been a minute for me playing that but i absolutely loved the silly guns and leveling them up and to do crazy stuff i gotta i gotta get into that on pc mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh man you did you just flashed me back there <laughs> Deep that nostalgia is, spike. i was a young lad <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, I, too, have been doing Catalysts and Iron Banner, so I've got Manticore and Centrifuge done. I hadn't done Manticore uh, two seasons ago. Just got Centrifuge done, and then I will be working on Malfeasance and Wicked Implement Catalysts next, and then I did a touch of Iron Banner. Uh, on my Hunter, I'm still... I went into the season 1809. I'm missing an 1810 helmet, and I have gotten nothing for it yet. Uh, it's driving me crazy. I've been running the dungeon on my Hunter, been doing Iron Banner, um, kind of stinks that we don't have Pinnacles dropping from the core playlist now. Instead, it's just the uh, exotic engrams because they're all dropping at 1809, and I, <laughs> I'm waiting for one 1810 piece, and then I'll be Pinnacle Cap for all three characters. But yeah, I got one more challenge left for Iron Banner. Hopefully, it drops the helmet. I'm gonna be really mad if it didn't because I did not want to play this much Iron Banner. But that's what I've been doing in Destiny 2 last week. Uh, hey, do we have any uh, have any com community feedback, Saint, from uh, from what we talked about la last week? We were not very sure how this was going to kind of go over, but we actually have had a generally resounding agreement on a lot of the things that we said in our kind of PVE meta uh, vibe check episode last week. So big shout out to everybody that has uh, just, you know, engaged with us talking on Twitter or giving their feedback on the takes, you know, what they what they think is good, what they think is bad and the discord chat and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to everybody that's been talking to us, been saying, no, nah, you're, you know, you're not crazy. Uh, you know, I think a lot of these changes you guys are proposing are pretty uh, in line with the meta or aren't over the top or anything like that. So feels good that we um we were kind of with the community, even though we were thinking that we were putting out something that may have been like a, you know, a little, a little controversial, you know, with the with the statements in the in the PVE meta episode. So big shout out to everybody that has engaged and just given feedback on the episode and their thoughts in the PVE sandbox as a whole. We always love seeing all that stuff. Um, as always, we want to give a big shout out to everybody that supports our show, keeps us on the air every week, supports Massive Breakdowns via Patreon, and especially our sponsors who go above and beyond, including A Modern Viking, Asky and Monk, Bryce Aroni, Deacon, I'm K. Rose, Moonlight, Shazzle, and This Moment. 
As a reminder, you can support the show by leaving us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. And you can always send us all kinds of feedback uh, directly to our socials, uh, you know, all our Twitters, the Destiny Massive Breakdowns, uh, Twitter, any of that stuff on the Discord server. We've got channels for all the different shows. Positive, critical, and constructive feedback always help with how we put the show together every week, how we present information, and all that kind of stuff. We also want to send a special thank you just to everybody that supports the show, downloading, listening to the show each week uh, and discussing it with us. It is it is not forgotten. We appreciate everybody that is downloading and listening in every week to talk about PVE. Now, speaking of Patreon, if you would like to support the show in an even more direct way, you can visit destinymassivebreakdowns.com and click on the link to Patreon. You'll get access to uh, Patreon members only Discord channel, the, the Patrons Lounge, a little bit of behind the scenes info and input on the show plus access to the annual merch drop, which you do not want to miss out on every year. Court, what are we talking about today? Episode 71. Yeah, speaking of Wicked Implement, we do have a little bit of a specific vibe check for that uh, in the most recent This Week in Destiny. Uh, and then we'll be going on to the sort of uh, meat and potatoes of this episode, which is the armor uh, vibe check. So we'll be looking at exotic armor. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, 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 armor mods uh, and just kind of uh, deciphering what's what's the hotness, what's the kind of average, and what's kind of bad. Similar to last week's episode. Uh, so weapons were last week. Our our armor is this week, and then we'll do abilities in a future episode as well. So yeah, let's uh, crack on. We have some quick highlights from the uh, 13th of July uh, twid. And yeah, Wicked Implement. Uh, so Bungie just kind of um, gave a little perspective because there has been a little bit of a feedback. Uh, we talked about it as well, uh, just the vibes surrounding Wicked Implement last week. Uh, so when designing catalysts, the team generally aren't there to create something that you need to get, but rather something to entice you to let your weapon achieve its full potential. And we've been seeing quite a lot of that. I mentioned Malfeasance. So Malfeasance itself is really solid. If you're a hunter as well, pair that with the uh, 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 the legs that the names escape me, Lucky lucky Pants. And so that, that recently got Vorpal Weapon. You don't necessarily need Vorpal Weapon, but if you want to do that kind of really... Uh, specific build of uh, burst damage or kind of uh, uh, overlapping it to sustain damage when it comes to malfe malfeasance uh, for single target. Uh, uh, that's the kind of vibe that they're going for. Um, they also explained sort of the vibe around Wicked Implement, uh, all about getting that rhythm with the pre precision hits, and they kind of balanced it around the, uh, the PvP sandbox. So primary weapon with a slow potential, would be pretty toxic. Uh, I think we've we've uh, we spoke to Chris one of the uh, dev episodes, and we kind of suggested, you know, what about something like uh, suppressive rounds, and you know that would be great in PVE, but not so good in PVP. I think would uh, be pretty uh, <laughs> catastrophic uh, if that was brutal. Such a thing in PvP, maybe but, uh, you know. Yes, <laughs> um, I'd have to be a sidearm, right? Yeah. That range. Oh yeah. boy. Uh, so that that's the kind of vibe around it. Uh, so it's really it's it's easier to achieve the sort of mini game in PVE, especially in higher difficulty activities, which we you know we gave a lot of builds, gave a lot of synergies with the stasis, stasis sandbox last week. Uh, so uh, you know that's where your enemies are more bulky, whereas in PVP you're not likely to get that slow potential because you're you're going to eventually like kill these uh, uh, the the opposite player uh, unless they've got something like an overshield. Um, as we mentioned, and the article goes into a little bit of a, a specific kind of overview, uh, Wicked Implement works with any stasis shards, regardless of their spawn origin, and Wicked Implement is very synergistic with your stasis subclasses. Having said all that, though, Bungie plan to have some changes. Uh, they, they said, a quote, a few buffs on the way, and specifically, uh, the timing window for creeping attrition is being adjusted, along with, quote, other things. So I think we're all kind of happy with uh, some promising buffs coming up. Uh, any kind of further vibes, you guys? You've played a lot with Wicked uh, since last week's episode. 
I mean, the catalyst was the new, you know, kind of like the new thing this week. And that is mm. basically getting the uh, ammo back or was it, it's like overflow kind of basically for the catalyst. You can get up to extra five shots. Um, and I think that this was an interesting thing where they said they wanted it to be nice, but not mandatory because I don't. Like I, I think that sometimes that is true, but I think that there have been other times where catalysts have been used as a way to bring up weapons that were in the lower rungs of the sandbox. Um, like something that comes to mind specifically, I think somebody brought this up was like Wither Horde. Wither Horde's catalyst is auto loading holster. Like I, I can't even remember the last time I loaded that weapon manually. And and I remember going through prior to the catalyst thinking this is like incredibly painful. And then that just like totally made the weapon to give it auto loading holster. So to me, that is like a mandatory thing. Uh, and then somewhere in the middle, you've got like cloud strike getting triple tap. Yeah, that's really good. And it helps it fulfill its potential in like a pve damage roll but it's still going to be pretty good without having triple tap on there uh even if the dps is is not nearly as good uh just because of the way that that affects the ammo economy but i mean i don't yeah i don't know just what do you what's uh what are your thoughts on like where a lot of the catalysts lands and or land and stuff like that oh boy um I was just going to run and talk about the Wicked Implement Catalyst, <laughs> but all Catalysts entirely. Um, a hit or miss, yeah. like if we're speaking in generalizations here, I do... Their their philosophy makes sense, yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want to be in a Wither Horde situation where you, you've got a really strong... Or the the one that comes to mind, even even more so than Wither Horde, has got to be Leviathan's Breath. Oh, Archer's yeah. Tempo. I mean... That thing's not even in the conversation without Archer's tempo. And if you miss a shot, you bet you're you you know you're just kicking yourself, yeah. being like, I gotta wait five seconds to draw this dang thing. But but um, yeah, I mean it's. I'm glad that they're they're acknowledging that they need to kind of make something that's enticing rather than essential. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm happy with Wicked Implement. I think it's fine right now. The Catalyst, once I unlock it, is going to be great. But hey, I'll always take more buffs. Um, it's, it is an interesting one, though. I think you absolutely need to have a pretty good understanding of Stasis Shards, which is why we went into depth about Stasis Shards last episode, so that uh, you are aware of all the different areas that Wicked Implement uh, kind of interacts with Stasis in general. And we'll be talking about Stasis a little bit with the various exotic armors for Stasis on our, all of our, our various classes. But yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what the, the quote, a few buffs on the way, unquote, means. So we'll see uh, we'll see how that all plays out, won't we? Yeah. Court, uh, any, yeah, was I say, any closing thoughts there on the weapon? No, I th again, I think I definitely appreciate that there. It's a very kind of fast turnaround in terms of player feedback, and then the weapons team are kind of reacting to this, and then we're mm -hmm. getting. We're not sure when this is. I don't think they gave a specific window as to when Wicked Implement will get these buffs. Hopefully next season. I think that would be kind of uh, a nice uh, introduction, especially with like hand cannon buffs that we're getting as well, uh, just to kind of spice up the meta. But. Um, no, I, 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 last week we, we gave a big breakdown and I think it's on that kind of cusp of being a really solid weapon, especially in GM territory. You know, we, we haven't uh, discussed GMs or kind of end game content this, this season in any, any of these episodes, uh, but it's definitely one of those weapons that's on my radar for bringing into a Grandmaster or a Master Raid just to kind of deal with something at long range or, you know, a champion uh, and just to get them kind of stunned and, yeah... I really appreciate a, a, an upcoming buff. In terms of what you were talking about, like Catalyst in general, the one that kind of <laughs> I was thinking about when when you were talking there, Scent, was, was uh, Trinity Ghoul. Uh, mm. That went from pretty average to... Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, like, not so much... I mean, it, in saying that's not that great as you discovered, or I should say us as a fire team discovered in... Oh, one God. of our GM runs, we were no, trying to use Trinity. That was Tikus. Oh yes, that was but yeah. I, I still think yeah. it's the same vibe with uh, with Trinity Ghoul. I don't yeah. think you, yeah. you can yeah, yeah. sustain that loop <laughs> as often. Um, whereas you know so, something like Tikus, I think has a little bit more 
of a synergy uh, compared to Trinity Ghouls. Because Trinity Ghouls, if you don't have that arc loop constantly going, then it just falls flat. But yeah. in, you know, your lower end content, that thing tears uh, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Saint, you want to cover Solstice, which is fast approaching. It's coming yeah. up very soon. <laughs> this is, um, this is, this is going to be right after this episode comes out pretty much. Uh, that is the 18th of July. Solstice is going to go for three weeks. We've got the EAZ, the European Aerial Zone, is going to be back. Uh, similar with a little bit of tweaks here. We've got enemy density turned up a little bit. Overall difficulty of the Bonfire Bash is going to be turned up just a little bit. Uh, and then those armor stats are going to be just as juiced, which uh, I believe this was the activity where you can basically pick a major and a minor focus uh, for your armor yep. stat, right? Yeah, which is so... I uh well well I'll talk about this first the the weapon that we are going to get is a strand rocket launcher there is a picture of it in the the twid and you can go see the traits in the API if you so choose uh precision frame which is a 0.9 from the baseline of the rocket launcher damage and it's got that intrinsic tracking uh we've we've talked about rockets a lot so you probably know kind of where precision puts it and not into a great spot but <laughs> i mean i think that that armor is still going to be something worth chasing especially if you don't have a bunch of really good artifice sets lockdown which we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later in the episode um and i think that that is going to be the major draw to this event it is kind of maybe getting some armor sets in your less played characters or finishing out some stat builds if you you know you, you want something that has a higher strength build now because you're using a new exotic that you haven't really touched before or something like that this is going to be a, a a great time to do it you guys uh you're going to be grinding some solstice you know, what's the, uh, I mean, we don't, we can wait to talk about the rocket launcher, I suppose, until it's, until it's available in the game. Um, yeah, I don't know. What's the, yeah, because we'll have so many positive things to say about a precision frame rocket yeah, launcher. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, 2023. Hold back before the thing even releases so we don't just absolutely put it in the dirt, you know, before it's even I mean, stepped on the track. You can see the purple. You know what it's got. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen it. Unfortunately, I have seen yeah. it. <laughs> Spoiler alert if you want a rocket launcher with Threadling. Um, Make sure you're here on Tuesday because there's going to be a really great opportunity for that. It's the wrong frame oh, for Threadling to work properly. Yeah, <laughs> man. Considering where's precisions, the blast radius? Precisions are not very good for blast radius, uh, as we've talked many, many times. And if mm. you're uh, familiar with my rocket launcher infographic, <laughs> uh, have a look there. Uh, but yes, say no more about... Our first strand rocket launcher. I'm looking forward to the second strand rocket launcher. <laughs> Yikes, dude! Oh man, the strand, the strand heavy weapons. They are, they're not it, chief. They're not it. Uh, you know what is it though? The armor vibe check. Yeah, we're following up on our. We're turning this into a series. Actually, we got three parts of the sandbox. We did weapons last week. We're gonna do armor this week, and then we'll do abilities. Maybe next week. Maybe the week after. We don't know, but. Today it's going to be our armor, exotic, and legendary. We'll, we have most of our stuff, of course, to say is going to be in regards to the various exotics on all three classes, but we do want to also touch on artifice armor and then the state of non-artifice armor, uh, as well as armor mods a little bit here. So, again, we're coming at this from a PvE point of view. We are not going to be talking about every single exotic armor because some of them, quite frankly, are just not designed for our side of the sandbox. So, PVE stuff, if you feel like we're not talking about one piece of, of armor um, and its PVE potential, you know, it's we have a lot of different options here. we got a whole list of various things that we're going to touch on. We're going to try and keep this short, but there's a lot of pieces. Again, it's all three classes we're going to be talking about here. So um, to kick things off, what we're going to talk about first would be the exotic armor changes that came with Season 21. Kind of the big question here is have we used many of the exotics listed that have been changed. So uh, we've got this broken up respectively to our classes. So Court, if you want to start with Hunter and then Sam will follow up with Titan and I'll follow up with Warlock here. Uh, what was changed for the Hunter exotics at the start of season 21, Court? 
Yeah, so there's a few. I think uh, the running theme here is a lot of them were kind of consolidated down to the, the sort of surges um, category uh, for damage mm -hmm. stacking. Uh, but there was a few, at least for hunters, uh, which were kind of kind of chopped and changed. Uh, I haven't used some of these, uh, and I've omitted a few as well that aren't really related to PVE, as Impetus said there. But uh, so sealed Aham Caragras was the first one that they 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 have in these uh, patch notes from seven point one point zero. Uh, so now reloads the magazine of all your weapons when you defeat a target with your powered melee, and for five seconds after dealing melee damage, you increase uh, increased movement speed and jump height. So I haven't used this, but uh, I think uh, Sealed Aham Kara has been kind of the, the sort of top tier play for that sort of um, uh, kind of play style. If you're I'm thinking like Fourth Horseman uh, or any weapon that you want to quickly reload and then swap to, uh, but I haven't really used a lot of it. Uh, the next one here with Atherus's Embrace, uh, which is just gaining additional strength while weighted knife damage bonus is active. That's nice, nice to have. Uh, and I, I, I do appreciate that they're kind of tapping into the, the sort of strengths of these exotics so you get you gain um a specific stat in this case with it being melee it's strength so you can kind of look back into the throwing knife pretty easy for hunters to get uh, their melees back anyway but if you're not playing into the whole like dodge to get your melee back uh, that's great um i don't use athrus's embrace in pve a lot but you know you do have the uh the stunning capability with uh uh, with the weighted knife with unstoppables uh, the strength i think is yeah it's plus 50 strength uh, so if you want to kind of uh, you know tag out or, or kind of uh, build craft into other stats if you're playing into this build then go for it next one up here is oath keeper uh so when fully drawn bows gain a bonus damage uh, against combatants then that increases as you hold the draw, but deactivates after a few seconds. So again, play kind of playing into the whole vibe with Oath Keepers. Um, if you kind of do a perfect draw or if you kind of hold it for a little bit and then time it perfectly, uh, you get a 150% increased impact damage against combatants. Uh, broadhead, Poison, uh, Stasis Crystals, Dragonfly, Explosive Head, uh, and other kind of things like um, Leviathan's Breath are not affected by this damage increase. Uh, but I do, again, another, another one that I appreciate that this was kind of a, you know, pretty much exclusively a PvP exotic. It, they've gave it some PvE potential. Uh, and, you know, something if I want to run uh, a bow build, uh, you know, thinking Le Monarch, even though it doesn't get the, the poison uh, increase, but it still gets the impact increase, go for that. Um, next up here, Raiju's Harness. When deactivating your arc staff super, you create a blinding explosion that temporarily increases your arc weapon damage uh super energy refunded upon deactivation was increased uh however blocking with whirlwind guard will no longer consume energy more slowly and the super drains 30 percent slower down so i think that was a bit of a, a tweak with raijus because you could sustain your arc staff super quite a sub substantial amount of time uh compared to like raid and flux which was the the, the big one I, I do have some comments about raid and flux later on in the episode um this is one that I was kind of like, this blinding explosion, I really hope was like the radius of an entire room, like the entire map. Uh, and mm -hmm. it, it, it has a reasonable amount of radius for the arc blind uh, explosion, but it, it, something about it just still, I'm not interested in using uh, arc staff and if i'm going to use arc staff i'm still going to use raiden flux <laughs> however this is one where we had the uh you get your increased damage with arc which is the whole like sta stacking uh business uh, i think it's just purely you get four kills and you get four stacks of uh surge uh, which is 25 percent damage increase to your arc weapons so again it's something if you are playing into the build of i'm using arc everything you know <laughs> i've got some really solid arc weapons in the sandbox right now um especially a certain smg with volt shot uh then yeah go for that but again not something i was kind of vibing with um it's one of these like I want a little bit more. It just needs a 
bit more extra for me to really consider uh, taking this into the sandbox. Radiant, Stan <laughs> Radiant Dance Machines hasn't necessarily had like a, a kind of zero to hero moment here, but it is a very fun exotic now. Uh, so kills while your free dodge is active extend the duration of free dodging, uh, and it no longer deactivates when you're too far away from enemies, and it deactivates after using a uh, suspending slam. So I can remember at the start of, or leading up to the start of this season, I was wondering how this would interact with suspending Sam, and sadly, only just it just cancels it out. So you can use one, and then that's it. So you can't do <laughs> suspending uh, uh, dodges all the time, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, it has a nice little kind of loop. If you're playing really aggressively, uh, you will play into the whole uh, loop with Radiant Stance Machine uh, dodging everywhere. Uh, it doesn't proc. A lot of the armor mods, which was, you know, kind of expected. Uh, Winter Shroud and Threaded Spectre Aspects, uh, you know, that's the, your, uh, your slow on dodge and you're uh, leaving behind a decoy. That was another one I was hoping would maybe be a thing. But unfortunately, you can't leave like 10 decoys behind. Uh, that would have been quite funny to, to see, uh, but it's not a thing. Um, but yeah, pretty fun exotic. I uh, appreciate the, what they've done with it. it. It came out really hot, and then it was uh, nerfed to the ground, uh, expectedly. <laughs> uh, but they've done a nice kind of rework there. If you're uh, into kind of dodging into different types of weapons uh, and kind of playing into that. Finally, for Hunters, is Mask of Bactris. Now, this is a bit of a weird one, because this, again, I think this will share the same vibe of um uh, saint with you know path of burning steps and then impetus with uh kind of like sanguine alchemy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mask of Bactris was this kind of weird like outlier when it comes to damage stacking they've consolidated this down into a surge tier four surge mod uh, so it doesn't stack with other surge mods, but can stack with global debuffs and empowering buffs. Uh, they've increased the boat damage bonus in PvE from 10% to 25%. That's tier 4. And um, before it was 10% to arc, and then 10% to those were that were affected by a stasis effect, so that was slower freeze. And for arc weapons, you could bring it up to uh, 21%. Uh, if it was against a slower frozen target. So it is a net gain because it also applies to stasis weapons as well. It's arc and stasis weapons. I think what a lot of folks and I kind of semi-agree with was that, that kind of dynamic of I can just get a free damage buff upon uh, uh, dodging with any weapon, you get that 10%. Uh, with any element to a slowed or frozen target, we have lost that. So it's like it's a net loss, but also a net gain in terms of it's a damage buff. But in terms of utility with other weapons, it's definitely a net loss. So it's a bit of a weird one here. I haven't used a lot of it, but uh, again, it's something I want to kind of play into stasis and arc weapons. Um, you know, stacking with an empowering buff, say like a Well of Radiance or Lumina, and then throw in a tether there, uh, just kind of get that classic damage stacking. But uh, yeah, I've seen a few, it's a bit of a mixed bag for Hunters. Um, for Titans, how are we vibing, Saint? I see at the top of the list here, <laughs> this yeah. is definitely a zero to hero. <laughs> the, well, the, the the zero to hero of the season is point contact can embrace. Um Point contact can embrace was basically just insurmountable skull fort, but not quite as good. And now it's totally its own thing and it feels great to use. And it just compounds with this seasonal artifact we have right now. Um, your, your lightning, your, you can jolt target with it's now you get like, uh, I want to say it's like four times the amount of damage, um, per like lightning bolt that goes out that you would normally get. So, um, you're, you're getting way more damage. You are jolting targets. And when you're amplified, um, you are getting another like 50% increase into your lightning bolts damage instead of just like the extra range. Now, 
there's stuff like shock and awe this season that is causing even more like chain reactions and things like that. Um, but thanks to something like brilliance, you can still have crazy good synergy with your art class, uh, heavy handed for those like melee or generation builds. This is now a like a fun exotic that is viable up to like a negative 10, uh, you know, deficit, right? I would even say it, that you, you get to a point where um, you're up close and personal melee exotics, especially when like this, where you have to like kind of charge it up and stay exposed a little bit and then unleash the big punch into a crowd um, starts to become like a little bit risky when you, you're getting to a, a greater than like a negative 15 point level deficit. Um, but for the most part, it is, uh, is very viable. You can clear out rooms, you can jolt things, overload, um, just absolutely tear through rooms of enemies. It's really fun, and it is totally separate from Skull Fort, so absolute win. Um, next up, I actually want to go to Eternal Warrior and Path of the Burning Steps because of what you were just mentioning, Court. And I think this is a really interesting one. Um, we, we have like a little bit of a subsection on this. Um, this is interesting because like path of the burning steps in my mind was was brought down kind of one tier from like top tier to viable and then you know eternal warrior was brought up like three tiers from like don't even have one in your vault to like viable you know and it's like it's kind of an interesting trade-off and and they don't you know this is not stacking um with your surge mods and your boots but it does kind of free you up there so it's like kind of when kind of a loss, like Court was talking about. You, you know, I, I think the the typical meta right now is to run two surge mods and um, a recuperation mod on your boots. Recuperation giving you that seventy HP on orb pickup. You also have better already, which is instantly starting uh, recovery. I, I think recuperation is like a hugely uh, used mod. So let's say your typical boot mod setup is going to give you a 17% uh, increase, right, in your uh, outgoing damage. Now, if you want to give up that health region, you can get that up to 22%, um, which I I, 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 mean, I mean, it happens. I, I definitely have, like, DPS loadouts that I'll just, like, swap to to make sure that when we're going into Nezzy damage phase, I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm getting my full 22% um, that I can get out of there. But these... Uh, these exotic armors will take you up even a, th a few percent beyond that to 25% at four stacks, right? So they stack similarly, and then once you get to four stacks, which only these armors can do, you're getting that 25%. Uh, and that, you know, can allow you to um, equip mods like Absolution, which cools down like all your abilities, or a grenade cooldown mod, plus um, a recuperation mod and like a holster mod, which holster mods are honestly pretty good these days. And I think this is one of the best ways to allow yourself to um, capitalize on holster mods. But the problem, I think, keeping these from being more popular is the fact that orbs are just so ubiquitous and so easy to generate in the current sandbox that it's like really really easy to have a like 17 or 22 percent buff um versus a little bit harder to build up to a 25 percent buff even though it's higher that's kind of more for like an ad clearing type of a scenario you're probably not going to be able to keep up your 25 percent buff with any one of these exotics uh going into like a dps damage phase so it's like uh it feels good and in kind of in a similar way that like i mean uh, I used to love using burning steps um, because it could give like, uh, I mean, it's like rampage for your xenophage, you know, or something ridiculous like that. Or you could use um, parasite, right? Build up a bunch of stacks, have like a ridiculously high damage buff, and then swap to parasite and just dump an absolutely obscene amount of burst DPS onto a boss. Um, and there's a little bit of that still there, but yeah, yeah I think orbs being so plentiful kind of keep these from being more popular. Um, I don't know. Impetus, any, any thoughts on the damage buffs real quick before I go on the rest of these Titan things or Core 2? I was going to talk about them when I get to the Warlock ones, okay. but I, I do agree with the general sentiment of like, I've got plenty of orbs, so the benefit that I'm getting by just saving on Surge mods doesn't seem like it's enough to really justify it. Um, it's nice. It's definitely a function mm -hmm. that I think a lot of these exotics just didn't have prior prior to these changes. But with the changes to our new mod system that we got in Lightfall, I'm not seeing a value. Yeah. 
and I think Court, you you spoke pretty pretty openly about massive backer. This is a similar thing. Of it's fun, you know, it's there. Like Chris talked about, um, Chris Proctor, the weapons lead, talked about uh, like so we we spoke about weapon stacking and damage stacking back in our first dev episodes and how Bungie are very aware they're acutely aware of how how these damage stacking can get really you know uh, can run away complete Mm -hmm. tear away Uh, and we got a bit more of an expanded answer uh last episode when we had them on as well plus rodney was kind of talking about you know this is kind of what we need to do in terms of consolidating everything into its own category so i Mm -hmm. from that like technical point of view i do appreciate it but as a player you know just outside the science community i'm just like some of these really unique uh, exotics like Mask of Bacris has took a bit of a hit and to, to your point about Path of Burn Steps I think this is maybe the most egregious egregiously hit is before it wasn't just explicitly solar weapons it was an empowering buff that affect all your weapons so you could swap from <laughs> Uh, you know, let's say Vex Mythoclast and then swap to Hothead as your uh, uh, your arc rocket launcher. And you'd get that um, uh, up to uh, 40% damage bonus uh, if you if you hit that times four. Um, now that's no longer too. possible. Good lord. 40, that, four zero. <laughs> yeah. That, that's no longer possible. You can't get up to 40%. It's been truncated, truncated down to 25% is the highest you can get with the damage bonus uh, at f- four times stack. That's the only way to get that. Yes, it's also stackable with impairing buffs, uh, but it's exclusively to solar weapons now. I think that's kind of been missed by the community. Mm-hmm. Is before Path of the Burning Steps worked with all elements, including kinetic. Uh, now it no longer does. Uh, so that's the most kind of the big hitter was Path of the Burning Steps. I know you you talked mm-hmm. about like a, a like a various builds that you kind of played into prior to these changes, and you know are are you using Path of the Burning Steps now? Same. Nah, I'm I'm if I'm on Solar Titan. I'm probably I'm probably running Synthos like for Bonk. Or I'm running Aeons, you know, if I'm in a in a situation where that is necessary, or um, yeah, maybe Phoenix Cradle, right? But I'm I'm yeah. not really Burning Steps is just not it for me anymore. Um, to to turn it back to a bit more of a of a positive note on something that in the Damage Sandbox here did gain a big bump in viability is no backup plants. This uh, is definitely seen a big jump. No backup plans grants like a 10 point or 15 point reload speed buff and like 30 points to airborne effectiveness, just like passively. Um, and the big thing here is that when you have a void overshield up, you get 35% increase in your shotgun damage, uh, which is a big chunk. I mean, that's a well of radiance right there, you know? Um, more than well of radiance. You're more than, yeah. I mean, that's, that's like a well is 25%. <laughs> The supersedes, I should say. Yeah. Um, and you can get you can generate a void over shield for yourself, even if you're not on a void class, by getting two minor kills or uh one kill on, on pretty much any other enemy will will generate the void over shield and, and give you some health regen. Um so I think this uh, Corey, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe this stacks with your like surge mods on your boots, but would not stack with like a a uh, well or a bubble, right? Yeah. So think of hunters with your Falcon Holberg, uh, how you get that damage bonus on finisher kills uh, for 35%. And again, it's an empowering buff. So it applies to all elements, uh, kinetic as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's not just void, it's not just uh, specifically to do with a surge mod, but you could theoretically uh, rock in with uh, um, uh, <laughs> the, the big heavy hitter that is. Acrius. Um, yep, Legend of Acrius. Arc Surge on top of that, go up to 20%. Uh, sorry, 22%. And now we're talking. Like Legend mm-hmm. of Acrius has been getting some little bit of love recently as well. Uh, but uh, that would be a, uh, let me have a look. It's a 64.7% mm-hmm. damage increase. And mm-hmm. then if you rock in with a uh, debuff, 
Uh, that's almost... Um, my calculators went off 1.3. Uh, that's 114%. So double damage. Uh, over double damage. Yeah. Plus you proc up your trench barrel, right, of course. Oh, yes. Whenever you get in there in the mix on your Acrius, you know. Um, I think this so is... So anyways, a, I started blasting. Yeah. Right, exactly. And things just start dying, you know. That's and uh, I have, 221%. <laughs> I mean, and, and I I really like it because it's kind of a like, okay, you, you've got to use a shotgun. you got to get in close. you got to be aggressive. But then you can get defense and damage in the, in the return on that, which, like, as we know... Um, just like I was talking about with point contact, like the the harder content gets, the more of a risk it is to get close to something and to expose yourself like that. And this is like the perfect balance of like um, you can get in there with like your heritage or something like that and get this procked up, swap to Acrius, just hit the melee and, and absolutely obliterate uh, something. You know, um, I've used this, um, you know, in, in any but some read encounters. I've used this in some dungeon encounters. I've used this just kind of running around. Um, you use a a aspect like Bastion, you know, where you're getting your uh, void overshield so easily already, or you can even just place that behind you or in front of you and go to town with a rally barricade with that void overshield up. Um, it's it's incredibly strong. You can pick up some orbs. You can stack the damage. It's so much fun to use. Uh, really enjoy no backup plans uh great exotic rework maybe uh i don't know maybe the i, I don't know Mick, point contact had a really big improvement i would put no backup plans as the second most improved uh out of the whole list here um movie on we had second chance uh get more of an update second chance is still trying to happen the shield throw melee now also weakens the enemies uh stunning a barrier champ will give will refund a melee charge um it's getting there, you know? I, I don't know if it's just that, like, shield throw versus, like, higher tier champions just needs, like, a little bit more of a buff. But if you have both your shield throw up, you can get that stunned. You can get one shield Mac. Uh, and the weekend is really nice for, like, playing the anti-champion play. Uh, second chance definitely feels, like, viable at this point. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say it's the meta. I'm not really... Haven't been, like, jumping to it as my go-to thing. We still have a lot of really easy anti-barrier options. But definitely viable feels way better than it did um stronghold gauntlets uh the heal from blocking shots precisely uh basically just turned into significant damage reduction while blocking with a sword just like 50 percent in pve um and then you also when you when you stop blocking you can gain restoration uh and that basically increases in the amount of damage or, or hits that you were taking um Another kind of no backup plans ish where it's swords, right? You want to be aggressive. You want to get in there close. You want to use a sword. Um, you can use this as like kind of your defense counter to like counteract the risk of getting in close. So big risk reward there have been bugged, have been really maybe too strong. Um, but I'm, you know, there's no sense in like really nailing home on the bugs. Uh, strongholds very solid exotic, very defensive exotic for getting in close. And then finally, Kepri's horn. Uh, it's like it's better, you know. It's it's uh, it scorches <laughs> now, which is cool. But like, it's just um, it's just not enough. It, it just needs a damage buff. It needs to like it needs to be doing like eighty scorch stacks instead of like sixty uh, or something like that. It's just really not enough. It needs more damage. Um, you get kills with it. It refunds some barricade energy, but it's just not strong enough to really matter. And I hope to see more boss to Kepri's. All right. Uh. Warlock, Sympathus. What? How do you how do you feel about the recent uh, patches beginning of the season here? Not great, Saint. <laughs> Not great at all, bud. I'll save the worst for last in this case. Uh, so Vesper of Radius. Oh man, this one. This one got. I mean, it's a it's a buff. It's it's a buff into a weird spot, though. I think it's kind of now just a a fun exotic. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, yeah, the rifts release arc shock waves. Final blows with the shock waves create that explosion, and then if you happen to be on an arc subclass, the shock waves and the explosions blind nearby targets. So, uh, and then of course on top of that, the rift energy recharges faster when you're surrounded. So there's definitely a little bit of a a skill 
uh, challenge to this. You know, if you want to play hyper aggressive, run up to a group of enemies in uh, in game PVE, throw that rift down, blind them, explode them, destroy them. There's definitely a play style there. I think it's it's very fun to nail down. Um, would I recommend this though to like our general audience? No, I don't think I would. If if you want to have fun, you want to goof off in in some PVE content with it, you know, go for it. It's definitely going to be cool watching those shockwaves obliterate enemies because it does a lot of damage but uh would i seriously recommend this for a dungeon or a gm or a raid only if everyone else on the fire team is also goofing off like you don't want to be that <laughs> one guy that's dragging everybody down with the ad clear <laughs> because you're rocking the vesper so you know it's fine i think it's in a it's definitely in a better position than it was before um if if you're somebody that loves releasing the shark our arc shock waves go for it um but i won't be recommending it on a on a broad scale here one that I'm still a little bit undecided on is Chromatic Fire. Uh, this got a big rework, kind of a subclass 3.0, elemental 3.0 rework. So depending on the equipped subclass, your kinetic weapons dealing precision final blows do create an elemental explosion. I'm not going to go through the whole list here, but um, I do want to try this out a little bit more, just kind of play around with it. Um, I've seen some content creators using it with Wish Ender uh, for that solid high precision damage and then also all the other effects that wish Ender provides i'm thinking maybe you bring in a scout rifle kinetic scout rifle like hung jury or transfiguration just to try that out with a non-exotic option there um could also be quite strong with kinetic hand cannons i don't know i haven't made up my mind about this one it i think it will probably if anything depend upon the artifact for a given season, what whether or not the verbs that are included with chromatic fires explosions have some sort of crazy strong buff uh, through a series of artifact mods, then I could maybe see chromatic fire kind of coming out. But season over season, no, I don't think this is going to be super relevant. I think this will be heavily dependent on a specific element and the subclass verb in question getting buffed up, but then saying, hey, if you want to, you know, be able to take this verb and apply it at this distance depending on whether that's mid-range short range long range depending on your kinetic weapon of choice then i could see making an argument for chromatic fire but beyond that no i'm, I'm not recommending this season over season dawn chorus i really got nothing to say that it's just not we're going to talk about super exotics and melee exotics and grenade exotics in just a moment here but dawn chorus is not doing it for me um i don't i don't think what is being offered is anywhere close to a viable trade-off for giving up your exotic slot um and the change that was made just <laughs> does not do enough for me you know small amount of melee energy when my scorch damages a target yippee you know uh, i'm just <laughs> jumping for joy over here over that small amount of melee energy it's not relevant and i i think this needs a, a, a much bigger rework here sanguine alchemy um Mantle, Battle Harmony, those are, of course, related to the new surges, those reworks. I'm not seeing a value with either of those. I think Mantle, Battle Harmony is probably, for most people, probably considered a, a PvP exotic more than a PvE one, but I did want to include it since you can use it in PvE to an effect. But yeah, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a value there. I'm not going to recommend it. Claws of Ahamkara. Um, again, I think some people probably think of this more as a PvP exotic. I know people were certainly using it on Shadebinder for back when <laughs> our stasis melee was crazy strong at the beginning of Beyond Light for uh, just a free additional instant freeze. But um, yeah, this got heavy handed basically, an extra copy of heavy handed. That was the change there. It's strong, but again, we'll talk about melee exotics in a bit high risk high reward i'm not seeing the reward personally and i would not recommend that to our general audience but um yeah you could certainly stack up on several copies of heavy handed get get some some melee charges going on strand you do get that additional charge it's four total charges of of strand melee which is quite strong for warlocks but yeah am i gonna give up my exotic slot for that no i don't think so i can do so much more with other exotics here Prometheum spur i I still don't understand why this exists. This is truly, I think, uh, a big question mark for me, even after the change. 
solar weapon final blows grant rift energy and then with my rift energies full final blows consume my rift energy and create a healing and empowering rift at the target's location um yeah what is what is happening here um you're really only going to proc this consistently at lower levels of pve content um unless you're using a solar heavy weapon but again to, to proc this consistently you need a heavy hitting ad clear style solar weapon uh which we do have plenty of exotic and legendary but again why am i giving up my exotic slot for this i just i don't i don't see the trade-off i don't see the trade-off at all i'm sorry um this feels like a waste to be honest um that's really i don't have i'm trying to think of something nice to say trying to think of some sort of build that i could maybe fold this into um, it's not coming to me i'm sorry healing and empowering rift at the same time you know um it it's it's cool but when you have well man it's just like i'd rather spec an intellect and have more wells <laughs> and we've got exotics that help me get more wells it's just so. diet well you know yeah yeah that's really yeah it's just diet well oh man poor prometheum spur one day one day we'll have a good good diet well <laughs> diet well option and then of course the the big one that uh, i think we all saw coming but uh still hurt nonetheless the nerf to starfire protocol um boy can't wait to get that ornament when it's available for bright dust this season am i right boys <laughs> um yeah this this is this is painful um i was just talking earlier about this but i I will fully admit that the damage output of the old Starfire protocol was quite high, um, too high, and I was fully on board with bringing that down, but what instead happened is the entire build that's centered around Starfire protocol, and I've seen some people online call it brain dead. I, I disagree. I think there are other better examples of something that's so simple that you could call it brain dead, but I don't even like that descriptor. Starfire did have a, a bit of a skill check, something that you could optimize towards. Um, again, having that damage over time component really allowed for your grenade to recharge quite quickly. And then you could, on top of having it damage over time, and we typically used either Wither Horde or Osteostriga to get that consistent damage over time. So that was your exotic weapon, right? We were already invested in our exotic armor with starfire and then you would typically if you wanted to really optimize your damage use an exotic weapon like wither horde or osteo for that consistent damage over time then on top of that you could also stack a heavy weapon of your choice we use rockets for the most part these past few seasons with the demolitionist perk so that you could get that quick reload whenever you're throwing out those quickly recharging fusion grenades and there was a sequence that you could go through in terms of how to get out the most amount of damage within a given time frame you know throw your grenade shoot a wither horde uh, and then fire your rocket reload uh, through demolitionist and throwing another grenade there was a sequence to all of that i'm not going to get into that because it doesn't matter that that was a build right and you could of course stack on armor mods on top of that while i do think that the damage output was too high it it was everything that i thought bungie was going to expect of us when it came to build crafting 3.0 that was advertised so heavily with the launch of lightfall right we're giving up our exotic armor we're giving up our exotic weapon we're on a specific subclass we're using a specific perk on our legendary weapon which is going to be in our heavy slot right there's a lot of investment there that i would have expected bungie would have been perfectly fine with right it was a proper build it had tremendous output the nerf to Starfire Protocol not only reduced the output of fusion grenades, it completely tore apart the build entirely. There's no way you can you can replicate the old mm. build for lower gains. It's, the build itself is just entirely gone, and that that is the part that rubs me the wrong way. Again, I'm, I agree with anyone that says Starfire was overpowered. It was quite overpowered. I would have preferred just bringing those numbers down, but instead... All of these other options that I had to to invest in to get that Starfire damage engine going, just gone. And now I'm kind of left with the pieces here, and it it doesn't feel good, right? Because I invested a lot into it. I'm not saying this as a content creator. I'm saying this as a player who actually used it, right? I I'm not sure. This is one of those changes where I wanna I wanna ask the sandbox team. What's, what's an appropriate level investment for a power fantasy? Because I, I would have thought that the way that we use Starfire Protocol, those crazy clips you might have seen on social media about your total damage output, I would have thought that that was 
acceptable. Maybe it was too strong. Fine. But I, I don't I don't think the build would have been the questionable part. But instead, with these changes now, you cannot be it, the way that they phrased it in the in the change log actually actually was we want Starfire to be focused more on ad clear rather than boss damage. So they've completely changed the identity of the exotic. That's why the build does, doesn't work anymore, because all the things you're specking into necessarily you, you don't need all of that for ad clear, right? Ad clear doesn't demand as much as optimal boss damage so that's it's one of those things where i'm just i'm, I'm heard about it because it's been completely removed but i also have questions of the sandbox team what 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 was wrong with this specifically that's something that i would love to hear from uh rodney and the team of like what what was the part here that seemed to be it was obviously in high usage and we know that they look at the usage numbers that was an overwhelming thing well of course is pretty much still a necessity in every boss fight for raids and dungeons but i mean you're not going to nerf well it's not like you're not going to remove that part so you got to give the warlock something to wear when when they're casting their well during a damage fight and i guess for whatever reason it was starfire protocol was just no we don't want them to be wearing that during the damage phase I would like to know why. I really hope that we could have a bit more of an ex explanation um, as to why that level of damage output was just not even viable. It's it's not overpowered. It's just you can't use that anymore during boss damage because that's the part that leaves my head scratching right there. But enough of me complaining about Starfire Protocol here. Um, that is our changes that we have for Season 21. And we've already touched on the new surge system just to kind of tie back into that, we're not really vibing with it. Am I right, guys? It's not not doing it for us right now. There's not a whole lot uh, of reason to use it. And is that mostly because orbs are just so plentiful? Do you think there's something else here that it's just not really doing it? Like if, if they tone down the frequency of orb generation, not that, that we might not even want that, but if that were to happen... Do we think these exotics that are now getting their damage sources changed and consolidated to the new surge system, would, would we suddenly be recommending those? Would we want to be playing with those? I mean, is that some is that a system that we even want to engage with? How, how do you guys feel about that, Court and Saint? Court, you go ahead, man. So, so the list here, Path of Burning Steps, Eternal Warrior, uh, Sanguine Alchemy, Mantle of ba Battle Harmony, which is another one, actually, I forgot that got a significant hit. Uh, to go from an impairing buff to a surge buff. Uh, it's kind of really took the wind out of its sails. Uh, Mask of Bacchus uh, and Raiju's Harness, they're, they're, those are the ones that are now under the uh, weapon boost family or the, the surge boosts. And it just feels there's been a lot of homogenization when it comes to these exotics where... You know, Mask of Backfrost had this unique kind of draw. Our like Path of Burning Steps was an empowering buff that applied to all your weapons. Now they've just been really truncated down into one entity, and they're, they're just not interesting enough now. Uh, now, looking at like your Falcon's Hauberk and no backup plans, I'm not saying that every other exotic should be like those, but those are the like the very interesting ones. Like saying you you talked about no backup plans for like. You know, what five ten minutes there, which is great. So it's good, like, it, it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a fantastic Titan exotic that does a lot of things, but it's not out of band. It's not really stupidly silly overpowered. Uh, you have to play into the whole shotgun meta and get overshoot uh, void overshields to play into the whole loop. I kind of just hoped that a lot of these other exotics like Mask of Bacchus and Raiju's and uh, Battle Man Battle, uh, sorry, Mantle of Battle ha Harmony had that similar vibe where there was something else to draws you into the using these exotics. And it, it's just, it's not there now. Uh, and it's, it's a big shame. Again, the point I wanted to make earlier on was technically, fr from a technical standpoint, I absolutely agree that Bungie have to do something about these exotics and kind of put them into one entity uh, and, and go from there. But a lot of their exotic identities have been lost. Uh, and it's a real shame. Uh, it's like just going from pre um lightfall when you know saint you were talking about path of burning steps and it was really mm -hmm. like something that you were building build crafting into uh and then now you know i asked you earlier on are you using it no that's, that that's the big shame here so uh someone like me who 
understands that damage stacking has to come down to one level uh, and homogenize some stuff. But the, the actual like Destiny fan here really misses a lot of the uh, identities with uh, some of these exotics. And I assume this will, this will be a running trend when they, they knock some of the other exotics that uh, we'll probably talk about later in the episode as well. But any other exotics that kind of play into this weapon surge family or new exotics will will be implemented into this weapon surge family. It's just a, it's a big shame. Um, Saint? Yeah, I think, again... Uh, the point I'm going to go to is like activation costs, which is like kind of like what we were talking about with the orb thing. This is like the real root of it. Um, you know, a lot of these weapons are going to re require me to build up to four stacks, which is 25%, which is great. And it is 3% more. Um, I don't think that 3% is enough for the amount of requirement. You know, you put on Reaper, you can just use your barricade and then get any kill and it's going to generate an orb um you know heavy-handed whatever you 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 get a grenade kill you get a melee powered melee kill you you know you get two weapon kills like there's so many things that can just generate an orb and give you that instant uh 17 to 22 percent buff um that when i need a a set of kills and it's only giving me up to three percent more i don't think that's enough I, I think that you maybe change this um where four stacks is up at uh you know 30 35 percent i think that there's more of an argument there because now the differentiation between four stacks of your weapon surge is you know a, a whole 13 percent difference versus your potential you know uh just surge you can pick up off an orb um so maybe just just too difficult to activate compared to an orb and not enough of a differentiation in terms of the power that you're gaining there i agree i agree it's yeah. What's weird is like, hmm, it would be kind of nice to have some sort of damage system that I could recommend as like baby's first like empowering <laughs> system, you know, like that's kind of what surges kind of strike me as. But the problem is you can still get a hold of stuff that's way stronger and does not have that level of activation cost, right? So it's like I can't even recommend it to somebody that's like just getting into the game that maybe doesn't have a lot of exotics because there's a good chance they'll just get a copy of something. Now that exotic engrams are a lot easier to acquire, they'll get a copy of something that'll give them like way more damage output through their abilities rather mm. than their weapons, you know? Oh, man. I Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if more stuff gets reworked to the new search system which i'm not sure i quite want or it'd be interesting to see if the search system itself gets stronger because yeah right now it's it's fine but not worth the investment i think is kind of where we land on that yeah and it is much cleaner you know to court's point from like a systems you know whatever engineering point yeah. of view it is way cleaner right no no denying that but i think that you do lose like with the cleanness you lose some of the uh the fun and like the potential of like the wonkiness of the prior state mm -hmm. I, th <laughs> I think out of the all of these exotics that we've been talking about that use the surge system raiju's is probably the like baseline where i think all of these exotics should be kind of uh, boosted up and including Raiju's as well where yes you get the the surge bonus but you also get some other bonuses as well because Raiju's mm. has got the whole thing if you deactivate your arc staff you get the blinding radius which I I want that to be like yes that's great but also can I have something else on top of that um, yes I'm getting the surge bonus as well but I think they should really just play into these um, you know yeah this is baby's new you know first damage stacking um vibe here but i like none of these exotics i'm going to recommend uh especially like light uh, uh mask of Bacris and raiders there's nothing else that's really appealing to me uh that i could otherwise just you know get 20 20 22 damage bonus with three arc or stasis surge mods and just mm. go from there so yeah, I, I'm I'm very like torn between a yes, I want the the, the like people to really uh, understand how damage stacks work, and this is really helping. Like it's uh, kind of tutorializing mm -hmm. uh, damage, and everything's getting into uh, one entity, uh, but also b uh, it's just 
really disappointing how these exotics are now just lost their identity. Um, speaking of identities, shall we move on to... So this is our kind of first of the three overview subjects when it comes to exotics uh, and then we'll talk about kind of our curated list of exotics so uh, first one here is super exotics uh, so should be should they be in the game should they be tweaked to affect other abilities i'll start us off i'll kick us off here to to answer both of those questions should they be in the game no <laughs> and should they be a tweaked to affect other apps uh, other abilities absolutely uh, I have had a huge problem with super uh, exotics. Now we're talking things like, um, uh, for me anyway, for hunters like Shards of Galinor or Guijin Vest, those exotics that only work in your super. And yes, you'll get a refund, uh, like Shards of Galinor, you're, you can get up to 50% of your, your super back. But these, these exotics just feel still... <sighs> Like they have their foundations in year one of Destiny Two, and we've we've like we're basically in a brand new game at this point, mm -hmm. and these exotics still exist in their current or or, or their former for, format. Um, I just I I just don't like these type of exotics. They're such a waste of a slot, and it's one of the big reasons why I brought that question to Rodney of why don't we start. Uh, consolidating and uh, like kind of uh, truncating a lot of these exotics into each other because uh, the big one for me was like uh, Raiju's Harness and Blight Ranger like why are these two exotics exist uh, as two different exotics on two different slots as well one as a helmet and one as a chest plate um, so for hunters it's it's not as you know you've got your Shard of Galner and you've got your Guijin Vest those are your like your explicit uh, super abilities. You've also got Celestial Nighthawk. I think a lot of folks wouldn't really consider that as a super exotic uh, in the sense of you use, your, you, you use your golden gun and you get that massive damage increase. But if you kill a target, you get uh, a third back. That ought to be changed. Like I think the running theme that I think the three, three of us will talk about here is we kind of want these exotics to have some passive ability. And I think the big um, kind of baseline here is start your scales. Start your scales buffs all super uh, damage, but when you don't have your super active, uh, if when you're picking up orbs of power, you'll get a little bit more extra uh, to your super. Uh, and obviously we're in a big orbs of power meta right now, so it's a very powerful and potent exotic. I'm not saying every exotic should be like Star Your Scales, but that passive ability is what I want for all of these exotics, Hunter Titans and Warlocks, um, because I'm, I'm just really fed up of seeing it, an exotic that requires me to be on one specific subclass and to have one super charged, and I get very little benefit uh so orpheus rig i think is <laughs> one of those where i've loved orpheus rig for so long uh but again it's in the same ballpark here uh, i'm a little bit more friendly to orpheus rig because it, it does have uh, you know it's it's ingrained with a support super in the first place uh so you're going to get a lot of your your um super back if you're using uh, the uh, the group tether as opposed to Mobius where you get an extra uh, uh, volley. But uh, yeah, I mentioned Raiden Flux earlier on. Yeah, it's another one where I would love to use Arc Staff a lot and I would use it with Raiden Flux, but because it's exp explicitly requires me to be supercharged and then use my exotic, yes, my Arc Staff lasts longer and I get increased damage, but I just want something else, a passive ability. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's my vibes with the super exotics. I don't like them. I wish they never existed. And, uh, Saint, how are you feeling? Yeah, I, I have kind of mixed feelings on this because, you know, when I look at the list of like Titan exotics, you get Cures of the Falling Star, Ursa Furiosa, Doomfang, Pauldrons, Helm of C14, um, I run Curus a lot. I mean, you guys know I run Curus a lot. It doubles the damage of your Thunder Crash, and um, 
I just really, I just really enjoy that. Um, and like the way that you can use it for the burst damage, it's a DPS option. It's an option to, uh, you know, you do a little damage to a champion, you stun it, you just nail it with a thunder crash and that thing is eviscerated and it gives you that overshield to kind of back out of the situation. So taking away a little bit of the risk of using the thunder crash, uh, Ursa's I have not touched in many seasons. Uh, Doom Fangs I see is something that's kind of in the middle because, um, similar to Star Eaters is kind of where I see Doom Fangs, right? Those, um, those powered void melee kills are giving you that extra 20%, um, to your super energy. So it is kind of like, you know, it has a bit of that passive, which is really nice. Uh, and then when you're getting the shield hits, it's extending your super duration. So kind of a nice in and out of the super balance there, which I, I, I think that is probably the best one. Uh, and then you got like Helm of State 14, which, um, was bugged for a while, but that's not really, you know, the focus of this conversation. Um, I think the funny part about that one is that it's seen a little bit of usage with the Titan's exotic glaive because of the way that the little bubble works. You can get the benefit of the overshield and the blinding from the little bubble in your exotic glaive usage and in your actual super, uh, which is pretty fun. You know, I mean, uh, I, I think that there are definitely some ways that, um, like Ursa doesn't get a lot of usage because Banner Shield doesn't get a lot of usage despite the fact that it's 35%. It just completely takes somebody out of the fight and there are very rarely situations in which it is worth it to just completely remove yourself from the fight in order to enable uh, your team to have defense and, and a big damage buff when Well of Radiance is right there and, and doesn't require the sacrifice of the person to be just casting and holding their super the entire time so i think that well radiance will just continue to invalidate uh ursa's because banner shield is invalidated by uh well radiance that's like a kind of a more meta super conversation um with curious i think that the it does not need a damage buff. It does, you know, it's just a great DPS output burst DPS output option, just like Nighthawk is. Uh, I think something I would like to see for Curious is that, um, you know, maybe you could enable uh, additional buffs with like Ballistic Slam or something like that. You know, maybe my Ballistic Slam does an extra 50% of damage and I also get a slight overshield depending on the distance that I travel with Ballistic Slam. So then, you know, you're getting a little bit of like kind of... Um, little little melee you know buff action uh not quite as strong as synth steps but like a little bit of a buff and again in the same way it is like taking away that little bit of the risk if you can ballistic slam into a scenario uh, and then have an over shield for you know depending on how long uh you're in the air travels uh so kind of a mixed bag there um hoping that those uh exotic glaive uh, reworks are just going to hit big and then Helm of C14 is going to really have a, a great place um, in, in the sandbox. I can't remember who it was, but I'm pretty sure when I went through the moon battleground GM, uh, the, the other, the void Titan that I was playing with was running this build uh, and it was pretty effective with the void glaive and the, and the Helm of C14 uh, and the gumdrop bubble. The amount of defense you're able to provide is, is really high. Um, yeah, but just where, where you at with the warlock super exotics exotic? Yeah, I don't have something I can say specifically about warlock super exotics in general, but it really rubs me the wrong way that a lot of our when we were going through the abilities 2.0 to the 3.0, certain supers were not getting buffed because of certain mm. super exotics already existing and they didn't want things to go get too crazy mm -hmm. like that's that to me was that friction there was i understand the design decision but i definitely don't like it and i would place the blame on the exotic armor rather than the ability itself right i know that uh thunder crash wasn't touched chaos reach was not initially touched the start of r3.0 because they were not they didn't want to take that stuff too far with curse of the falling star and then also geomag stabilizers and that that is frustrating to me right like I, and i guess golden gun also would fall under this category too uh from that change as well if like i i want the supers to be strong they're supers but if if they're being held back on account of an armor piece then why do we have the armor piece like change that's the part i would want to change i want because the super does not come around 
frequently, right? And I would rather that they, if Bungie feels like they need to slow down super regeneration so that when you do cast it, it feels meaningful and you do see a lot of damage or you see a pretty powerful support effect like bubble or well, then uh, that's where I lean towards. I don't, I don't want some damage super being held back on account of an armor piece. I would rather that armor piece either be removed, but since we know they won't do that, then tweak to affect other abilities. That's what I want from this. So that's kind of my thought, I guess, on Geomax stabilizers when it comes to warlocks. There's just a few other ones where I, I, I don't understand why they're in the game. The most recent one, of course, Balador's Wrath Weavers. What a great name for just nothing in return. <laughs> I mean, oh boy. <laughs> My shockwave deals increased shatter damage, dude. That that'll totally rock those enemies there. Um, and then you know, if just the additional tacked on effect of allies in range of my shockwave gain an overshield and increased damage with stasis weapons. Who who is build crafting into this? Who is taking the time when they pop Winter's Wrath to really make sure that you know who's calling out to the fire team? All right, guys, get close here. I'm about to I'm about to give you an overshield. <laughs> And a 15% increase to all your stasis weapons. Everyone swapped your stasis weapons. Are we all All right, I'm doing my shock. Like, that's not happening. Come on. Nobody is doing that, right? We're not using Winter's Wrath in a in a, a damage scenario like that. We're using it for ad clear. We're roaming around the battlefield. We're playing those dubstep noises in our head. We're shooting bolts out at enemies and popping them and killing them. Like, that's, that's Winter, Winter's Wrath. The, the super's been out for a year, and you still gave us... It's been out for two years, actually, and you gave us Baladorth. Baladorth, I can't even say the damn thing balador's wrath weavers on top of that two years after the super's been out you know how people are using winter's wrath why does this exist like that's that's the one that i really am just like i don't understand that but a few other ones i mean phoenix protocol turns well into a super that we popped during ad clear which uh okay go off guys um you show those minor enemies. I don't like that's how you have to use it optimally, I guess, if that's something that you really do. I would much rather prefer instead of using well for ad clear, we could use actual daybreak and then, you know, Don Chorus gets turned into a, a useful uh, exotic. But that's a different conversation entirely. Um, you've got Skull of Dire Ahamkara, Storm Dancer's Brace. I mean, again, they're. They're getting benefits. I'm not going to say that they aren't. You know, additional damage resistance during Nova Bomb is is pretty pretty sweet, I guess. If you if you're worried about getting sniped while you pop super, but in that case, I'd probably say maybe kill the things that are dealing damage to you before you pop your super. I don't know. Um, that one probably needs to get overhauled entirely. Storm Dancer's brace. Oh boy. Um. Yeah, I just use Crown of Tempest, you know? I mean, really, that's all I can say. Like, there's there's another exotic that isn't strictly a super exotic, but does give you enough of a benefit. And I think that's probably the case for a few other the exotics on other classes. But in the case of Storm Dancers, like, that just needs to be tweaked entirely. That needs to affect either other abilities or the benefit to your Storm Trance needs to be juiced. But they don't like to do that because then they withhold changes that they would make to storm trance and that's yeah. again just ties back around to my core problem with super exotics i would rather that the base super gets juiced to high heaven so that when i do pop it i feel like a god rather than oh shoot i forgot to swap to my storm dancers bracer oh shoot i forgot to swap to my balador's wrath weavers now my winter's wrath shockwave isn't giving an overshield and a 15 percent damage increase to my allies i just threw guys let's wipe let's start the whole thing over here i just i'm so sorry like that that is not how we want to play the game right that's not destiny 2 destiny 2 is popping your golden gun and doming a fool on the other side of the map feeling like a superstar it's just clearing out waves of ads with your winter's wrath or it's popping a bubble everyone gets saved we get that buff to our our damage then we all stop out step out and just gun everyone down like that's the fantasy right that's what we get sold in the commercials for the expansions and super exotics are just not lining up appropriately with that fantasy so i've talked enough about that i'm sorry Oh, it's I kid. hate super exotics. I just don't get them. Like, that's the one one big question mark when I look at all these. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Ursa Furiosa, man. I think, did we stop using that after Witch Queen? Like, did Void, Void 3.0 just kill that for me? Because I, th I remember using it in some GMs prior to that, like during Season of the Lost. But I think once Witch Queen dropped, it was just kind of like, I'm going to use something else. I, th I don't think we need this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I remember using it in, uh, in specifically like the Proving Grounds GM. And then mm -hmm, thinking mm -hmm. like, yeah, you guys have been standing here safe from like the tanks for the past like 30 seconds. But 
nothing changed in the room. Like we, we you, you, it's just not enough to like make the difference. Like it would be way better for me to just run Hammer of Soul and just to chuck a bunch of hammers and to clear out half the room. And that is actually going to have a positive impact. And let me now let me I could instead put on Phoenix Cradle, which is still going to buff my allies, and I'm not going to have to sacrifice my whole person just standing there in the middle of the room for 30 seconds being like no no no, it's cool guys i got it no no, no I, got, I got the tank shots don't <laughs> worry it's fine you can come out here now it, just these exotics where <laughs> your entire build is based on i need to get x amount of kills or x amount of damage so i'm closer to my next super and it's just like i, like, mm-hmm. I, I just i've never bought into that whole uh, build crafting yes you get your super more often but you're you're then kind of sacrificing your 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 entire build and your entire super to ensure your next super is not sacrificed and it it's just it's just this unhealthy loop uh that i've always had a grievance with you know, shards of galanor and ursa furosa and uh, mm-hmm. like phoenix protocol and skull of diaham carrots like i need to make uh, 10 kills for this to be effective otherwise i might as well just put something else on and that's the big vibe is we need to put some more neutral uh based effects on these weapons um and for me the running theme here is either th- these exotics are too generalized or they're way too specific and they don't do enough uh, a good enough job. So to segue into our melee exotics for the hunters, I'm thinking Caliban's hand is all about prox knife, um, and it mm-hmm. does a good job with it uh, in both in PvP but also in PVE. Maybe not so much in the end game content, but if you can get that that shot, uh, sorry, that that hit with your prox knife that causes that ignition to then loop back into your knife, that's like kind of the the ballpark that i'm kind of vibing with when it comes to these specific exotics where it, its whole deal is prox knife and then ignition if you get that ignite and if you can get that nice synergy going you can keep going with that and that's what i really vibe with but, but for something like shards of galinor where i need to get 10 kills for me to get 50 percent of my super back uh, and then i'm obviously closer to my super and it's just it just doesn't work it really does not give me uh, happy vibes here uh so yeah thumbs up for me with caliban's hands really solid um uh, solar hunter i know i don't talk a lot a lot about solar hunters but caliban's hand is a great uh kind of scorch into ignition uh build uh and <laughs> like the whole kind of synergy or synergizing with your subclass abilities uh, which we'll obviously talk about in more depth in a future episode but uh, that's the big vibe here with caliban's hand uh, something like Aphidia Spath, which doesn't necessarily... Well, actually, I'd be lying if it doesn't... I would be lying if I said if, if it didn't have any uh, solar synergy. It absolutely does. It's got this kind of hidden uh, kind of synergy when interacting with knock down aspect while Radiant, you actually restore one charge with a knife kill and the knife trick precision kills and a direct ignition kills in which knife trick applies scorch restores two charges. Uh, and that Phidia Spath is also uh, where you get uh, a, an extra melee charge to all solar uh, subclass um, uh, melees uh, throwing knives. Um, so that's another one where it's like it its whole build and its whole strength is um, strength. It, it's it's built on the whole kind of purpose of uh, melee, uh, solar melees, uh, which I really absolutely vibe with. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about grenade-based uh, exotics, which are a little bit more... <laughs> there's something that I'm quite egregiously frustrated when it comes to these types of exotics, which are hones on on one ability, uh, and then it doesn't really good, do a good, good enough job. But uh, in terms of melee exotics, I think they've got it quite well with Hunters. Liar's Handshake, for me, is the, the, the last one I'll talk about, uh, which, you know, it's just a solid one. Um, kind of <laughs> Hunters, if you want to 
uh, uh, roleplay as a titan. Here you go. It's Liar's Handshake. <laughs> it does require being up close and personal, but uh, again, it's another exotic that really plays into the strength of as long as you're up and up close and personal. If you want to combo it with combination blow, yes, there is uh, uh, a little bit of uh, diminishing returns when it comes to damage stacking with Liar's Handshake and combination blow. But it's absolutely like uh, you, you can absolutely uh, combine the two uh, and get a really great damage buff uh, off with two. Um, but yeah, I think Bell Exotics for Hunters, they're, they're, they're okay. They're doing fine. Um, it's Grenade Exotics that I'll, I'll talk about uh, a little bit uh, shortly titans what uh how are we vibing with the melee exotics saint yeah titans titans got a lot of melee exotics they got a lot of melee abilities um you know you got acd zero feedback fences are fine i think this is really more of a crucible thing uh you know armadillo man build is very funny if you've ever seen that video from cami um so I don't think they're great in PvE, but I don't think that they're really meant to be great in PvE, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Uh, Synthoseps are still out here. They're still doing their thing, still really strong. Uh, play a lot of Synthos with a Bonk Hammer on Solar Titan. Incredibly strong for that, uh, you know, just solo play, right? Because you're already getting so much health back there. Uh, just really fun build. Um severance enclosure is something that i just saw was kind of fun funny for a long time um but actually like kind of effective depending on the range build you're using um i think it was bryce who was using this with a uh, fletched storm in a recent gm and seeing the enemies just get like thrown around from severance enclosure is actually like pretty effective honestly um so really Honestly, solid exotics that I, I I don't think people give Severance a chance really or, or use it very much, but it is really fun to use and is and is effective enough. Uh, Peregrine Greaves at that two hundred twenty five percent buff for uh, shoulder charges in the air, but I just still don't use them a ton. I think it's like the airborne requirement that there's just not a lot of scenarios in which I'm really interested in using that over. Uh, something like synthos that I can have up like a hundred percent of the time with my like throwing hammer versus like I would have to spec into like peregrine greaves and a lot of strength to get back my uh you know my my melee hit for in the air and that's much more of a single target thing. I would much rather have the buff up all the time, just be capitalizing it all the time, not even need to be worried about my strength stat because I can just grab my mini hammer back up off the ground. Um we also got talked about point contact. Absolutely had the biggest glow up ever. Really goes in with the season builds, aggressive builds. Still going to be good after this season. Uh, and then finally, Worm God Caress. Um, still situational because of the way you need to build up the stacks. Uh, this was a weapon that was seen a ton in like the the Golgoroth uh, three man. Right, basically, you you would build up sacks with this, and then slide into a shotgun shot, and then hit the shield bash with one two punch in all the burning um, fist stacks active, and the one two punch active, and all this stuff, and it would do just obscene damage. Um, but I, I think that worm gods are just generally kind of like a niche thing, where synthos are going to be your much more applicable one. Um, and then. I mean, that's that's pretty much it for the Titans. Like, Titans have so much available on the melee side. Um, but Synthoseps, with the whole, like, the way that it activates just three enemies within 15 meters is, uh, it's just such a low ask for the the 200% damage increase in your melee. And it's also, like, a 50% on Glaives, too. Um, just, just really good, really hard to look past unless you're going to go into something situational like point contact, I could see, or severance enclosures, kind of fun uh, I and mean, pretty effective. Um, Imptus, we, we got a, honestly, a surprising amount of, of Warlock melee exotics too. I, I have no idea what to make of these. So I'm going to be <laughs> perfectly honest. I am not a melee exotic person on Warlock. I've used them on Hunter and Titan, and I feel like they have good identities. I know that we have some some decent options, but I just don't see the fantasy compared to some of the excellent grenade exotics. I think a, a big problem, of course, is that these are all arms, and we have a lot of grenade-based exotics that are also in the arm slot, so it's it's like I'd rather just swap them out for something that lets me overcharge my grenade and, and kind of stay in that middle distance, whereas these melee ones do require me to get a little bit up close. I will say in the case of Winter's Guile and Karnstein Armlets, 
they have synergy with glaives now so that is an option there i don't have to get super close or if i do have to get super close uh to use the melee part of glaives i at least have the shield to fall back on so that that's definitely an option there Felwinter's helm though um i gotta be honest i think i'd rather use tractor cannon <laughs> you know uh yeah i think i'd i this is one of those times when i'd rather just go for the gun not the armor um i know it's strong i've i've certainly seen some some powerful results when used right but again for like the purposes of recommending to our our general audience like yeah just bring somebody with tractor cannon or, or be the tractor cannon person yourself you know it's it's a strong strong option there um and then i think also kind of like remembering to go with the finisher to keep the effect going consistently it can be kind of difficult in the moment because you just want to kill the enemy once it gets to that low health option so it's tough but again that's me kind of speaking from my own experience obviously if, if I've, i know that there are people out there that use it to a, a degree of success so that i'm sure i will hear from them after saying all of this but those are my thoughts on on fell winter's helm sun bracers again everyone thinks of it as a grenade exotic for for the result but the the trigger is a melee kill so it is a melee exotic in, in that regard compared to all of the other exotics that we've mentioned so far um i think that's what a lot of people have swapped to now with starfire being nerfed is, is the sun bracers i certainly see that a lot more when i'm doing seasonal activities from from solar warlocks uh god forbid we ever use daybreak or any daybreak related <laughs> exotics right so yeah i think sun bracers has kind of filled that slot now um it's certainly better for ad clear than Starfire. I mean, it's it's easier to kill enemies in lower level content with that powered melee, but um, it still requires that that kill, and that's that's difficult to do. It's dangerous to do in a GM. Uh, in raids and dungeons, I think it does kind of depend on the setup. You're certainly not going to be using this during the boss fight of a raid or a dungeon, but for the in between moments or the ad clear encounters. Yeah, this can be quite strong, especially if you're in a pretty small area. You can you can spawn trap a lot of incoming waves, which can buy you and your fire team a lot of time. So I see I see the potential on paper. It's just one of those things where on practice I probably need to work with it a little bit more to kind of figure out where I fall on it. But I think if you you know if you've been using Sun Bracers and you've been having a lot of fun, let me know, man. I mean, what what mods are you running? Um, what what success have you had? What where are some pieces of content that maybe you you don't bring Sun Bracers? You swap to something else. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now is I just don't know what, where this shines exactly, you know, what kind of piece of content, how difficult can you take this, uh, piece to, I've already mentioned Klaus Bahamkara. I think that's so heavily dependent on the base strength of the, the melee of whatever subclass you happen to be on. Like it's good on strand. Um, am I recommending it for void? No, not at all. Uh, don't, don't need an extra charge of that, that I'm not getting, I'm not becoming more lethal with that on so yeah um it's yeah warlocks are in a weird spot with melee exotics i think they've definitely juiced our, our grenade exotics we'll talk about that next but it's not quite there i think it's still a little bit too situational uh, for, for most of our melee exotics but i do love the fantasies that hunters and titans have with their melee exotics it seems like you guys can certainly get those loops going uh, a little bit easier than the warlocks can and that's fine um i, I don't I don't necessarily think that we all need to have equal strength with every single ability, but that might be controversial to some people, I suppose. Shall we go on to grenade exotics? Do you guys have any final thoughts with uh, melees? All right, let's talk about grenade exotics. We we definitely have some some bangers here, um, probably some some ones that we can we can say a little bit more praise for. Again, I'll, I'll go back to court here for the hunters. What what grenade exotics do you guys have over there? There are some bangers here, uh, but I'm going to need to pour another another scotch, I think, uh, at this <laughs> point, because... Uh, we're coming up on the, the treasured, yeah, the beloved. Yeah, so I was alluding to, like, Bungie should really make these exotics play into their strengths. And we have one... Uh, which I actually sorry two that I've listed here. Uh, the big one here is Young Ahamkara Spine, and that's the whole kind of it's trip mine. Trip mine gets uh, juiced up, enhanced, 
um, fifth, uh, sorry, fourteen percent explosive damage. Uh, the the length and the width are increased by fourteen meters. Uh, you no longer have uh, self damage and no fall off. It lasts thirty seconds as opposed to ten. And then the trip mine itself uh, is more durable and it's got fifty percent damage increase. Uh, sorry, damage resistance. Uh, and then the whole kind of loop with solar as well. Uh, solar ability damage recharges 33% of the trip mine grenade ability. Uh, and so that includes trip mine and knife trick. Uh, hits count as two instances of solar ability damage if the target survives. So you can get your, your trip mine back really fast. Is this too strong? Perhaps, especially, say, in PvP. But uh, we're not talking about that in, in this episode. Um, but that's one example where Bungie have really like honed in with the strength of uh, trip mine grenades. On the opposite side of the coin, or the, the other side of the spectrum here, we have Lucky Raspberry, uh, which, yes, it, it is a Destiny 2 exotic. It existed in Destiny 1 as well, but uh, let me give a very... Well, <laughs> the whole description <laughs> is brief. Arc Bolt grenades have a uh, an additive 25% chance per hit to recharge your grenade ability. Uh, so uh, also arc bolt grenades can chain up to four times uh, as opposed to three without the exotic so if you get four hits with arc bolt you'll get your grenade back but again this plays into the whole problem that i have with super exotics where my whole entire build is dependent on i need to get four hits uh saint and impetus please don't kill these guys because i need the four <laughs> hits so i can get my grenade back to then i can like juggle with this grenade again it just it just doesn't i don't buy into this type of build uh please let me know if you've had any success with lucky raspberry but i i i've i've tried to use this exotic and because of the mini game promoting the whole I really hope I get uh, that 100% chance to get my grenade back. Otherwise, it's, you know, 75% and then it's like, oh, I might not actually get my grenade back. Uh, it's just these two, like, comparisons of the whole point I was making earlier on is that they really need to build into the strengths. So for Lucky Raspberry, I think they could play a little bit more into Arc Bolt, uh, especially now that every subclass... Uh, has the the ability to access uh, arc bolts. Hunters should be like the okay, like this is the place to really capitalize on arc bolt grenades. Uh, plus some other bonuses with arc bolts. But also put in a little bit more. It also buffs X Y Z arc grenades. I'm just kind of uh, throwing out some examples. I haven't really thought this through, but. Uh, this is a, a prime example where I think they could be a little bit more generalized with R Lucky Raspberry. Its whole speciality is Arc Bolt, but also it enhances very slightly other Arc grenades. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, speaking of another Arc grenade-based uh, uh, arms, uh, you've got Shinobu's Vow, Vow, which I've kind of raved about uh, since they've um, uh, since they've existed because they are very great. Uh, and again, it's another example where, just like uh, Young Ham Ahamkar Spine, where it does a really great job. You know, you get an extra skip grenade charge, uh, the ch the drones are more aggressive, and you get grenade ability back. And I think that's just perfect. Uh, Shinobu's Vow, yeah, it did get a little bit of a hit at the start of... Um, uh, it was back prior to Witch Queen, uh, and we're kind of questioning, like, why did Shinobu's get such a, a deep nerf, considering the fact uh, Arc 3.0 was the last of the reworks? Uh, but it's still a solid exotic. It still does its job, and it's a really great grenade-based build. And it's actually one... It's, it's how I get my, uh, like, 150 orbs of power at the end of an activity se session. It's because of Shinobu's <laughs> vow. Uh, so, you know, th those are the two prime examples of how they should really capitalize on the strengths of these exotics when it comes to grenades, uh, for, for hunters when it comes to grenades. It's really go in, go in with the strength, go in with the strength of the exotic with the, the grade. Otherwise, go for something a little bit more generalized, uh, like Lucky Raspberry, uh, hopefully be as a suggestion anyway for, for Lucky Raspberry. Uh, I would get some messages if I didn't 
mention renewal grasps um obviously it took a little bit of a hit uh it's one of the the, the slowest cooldowns uh when it comes to a grenade do i agree with it no um is it still a very powerful grenade uh, when you especially when you pair it up with uh, one of the stasis uh, aspects for hunter uh we have um touch of winter so you can double up on that uh, you get a, a, the biggest size for the, the dust field grenade plus a large crystal if you're doubling up. But that cooldown really has tanked that the, the usage for renewal grasps. And yeah, we, we weren't, when we had Rodney on, we weren't going to talk about specific uh, exotics. Uh, and we, we, we did make that very clear at the start of the episode and kind of leading up to the episode, we didn't want to talk about what about this exotics? You know, it always leads to that same answer of, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're, we know, we're aware of these exotics and the feedback. Uh, but Renewal Grasp is still one of those where I think the community sentiment is like, why was this really deeply nerfed? Uh, and when we have stuff like uh, Shinobu's Vow, which is doing a really great job, and you can have a grenade, uh, the grenade uptime constantly, uh, and even like young Ahamkara Spine as well. Uh, it's just like, it seems a bit of a lopsided uh, comparison between the two. Um, so I like, don't get me wrong, I'm completely happy with Renewal Grasp and the whole kind of, yeah, it's it's another kind of young, young Ahamkara Spine and Shinobu's Vow. It plays into the strength of a dust field grenade. Uh, but if they're going to keep that long cooldown, I would maybe make the su suggestion of why don't they make Renewal Grasp also tap into it it slightly improves the other stasis grenades for hunter uh, just as a kind of uh you know generalization change but uh yeah i've i've kind of ranted uh, and raved about grenade exotics uh, it's the same vibe that i have with super, super exotics is play into the strengths or do a more generalized outlook or don't bother at all um uh titans saying how are we how are we vibing i i've got some mixed feelings on the the grenade exotics similarly to some of the previous sections i'm going to start off on a on the lower note here with armamentarium uh armamentarium was once a very popular exotic armamentarium grants an additional grenade charge um that's just not enough anymore and and the reason I say that is because not that having an extra grenade for any given class is good, but it's not actually changing any anything about how my uh, my grenade cools down, the the damage that it does, the effect that it has. None of, none of this stuff is actually changing on my grenade. And the only way that I'm like really getting a benefit out of this is that like the beginning of an encounter. Uh, you you get two grenades to start. That's great. But like once you use a grenade and it runs out and and it's you know charging back up, you use your other grenade and now you're just waiting for the grenade to continually cool down. It's like yes, this is fine if you're fighting against like waves of enemies and you're having like lulls in between where you can recharge both of your grenades. But there's no um, you know uh, I th I think that would would get me to like really see this as a benefit is um you know grants a second grenade charge when you have one grenade already charged your grenade recharge rate is increased by 30 percent 50 percent something like that to make it to where uh you're you're getting that extra benefit a little bit faster or have a reason to like hold on to that grenade or just a second or anything like that um but i think that it is just it's just not it uh when it comes to the amount that it's going to offer for your like exotic slot um i think it's fine. It's not a bad thing. And, and again, I think that it, working it into some kind of regeneration or something like that or some kind of benefit to your grenade even uh, would be really nice because this is such a vanilla thing at the moment. There's really a lot of ways they could take it to, to buff it up that I think would make it viable. Um, maybe a chromatic fire type of effect where it has a little bit of a different effect for each uh, element class or something like that uh, would also be great. But yeah, again, even just like a little bit of recharge for your second grenade charger or something like that or or maybe you get increased duration when both grenades are fully expended any you know again anyway the sandbox team would want to take that i would be here for it um and i 
think that I have to mention next, uh, Heart of Inmost Light. Hoyle, you know, Hoyle has been hit hard. It got like a 50% nerf. And I still think that Hoyle is a superior exotic over Armentarium, uh, despite the fact that it got nerfed uh, pretty heavily. And I think that that says a lot. Um, I think that people thought that the Hoyle nerf was too much. It was like a half of its efficacy got you know, basically taken away, and it really was not. It's still an incredibly effective exotic, especially if you're building into it at all, uh, or have a, a, a ability to loop on your class at all. This can just immediately complete that circle and allow you to to live out the loop there. Um, it takes a little bit of, of coordination, I get it, to like get the double stacks up, and it's a little bit harder since the duration is only five seconds now to get the two times empowerment to get that really, uh, you know, really get cooking on that ability cooldown, but uh, still incredibly strong and absolutely uh, I would consider a meta option, which we'll talk about in a minute when we talk about a few other things that are kind of on the fringes or at the top. Um, and then finally, I got to mention Ash and Wake. Um, Ash and Wake is really fun. It explodes those fusion grenades on impact, right? And it's uh, because of the way you can use um, your your solar stacking damage um, to get up to a 73% increase in your solar abilities, including these grenades. Uh, it's a really fun thing to use, just like Shinobu's, or not Shinobu's, uh, Lucky Raspberry gives you refund, uh, like 25% for a minor and like 50% for a major or something like that. So uh, honestly, really fun, pretty solid. And I, I I think that that can just kind of be fun and we don't have to 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 make it a super meta thing. It could just give you that Mario throwing fireballs fantasy and that, and that can be enough. Um, Impetus, we, we got some strong options here for the Warlock. Yeah, yeah. We do. Um, I think kind of right off the bat here, I'll, I'll just talk about the strongest ones because I don't have a lot to say about them because they're the strongest ones. Verity's Brow, Controverse Hold, Osmomancy Gloves. I've talked about the latter two a lot. They're kind of my go-to whenever I'm on Void or Stasis. Um, Verity's is, is very, very strong in a little bit more niche situations, but um, I don't have any notes for it. When when used properly, it will, it will devastate even raid bosses at the highest tier. Um, it does require a lot of setup though, which I think is why not many people use it, but controversial hold osmomancy, very simple gameplay loop, very strong results there. Um, few other ones that we do have, again, a lot of these are gloves, getaway artist, starfire protocol has now been nerfed to, to a pretty pitiful state. Um, but getaway artist and nothing manacles are kind of the two where, they're very much grenade exotics, but the reward that you get just isn't enough for that trade-off of using your exotic slot. In the in the case of getaway artists, I'll start there first. There's just there's better arc exotics, right? You've got I think at the top there would be Fallen Sunstar, and then below that Crown of Tempest will give you more benefits, just flat out more benefits um, using your grenade, but also using other abilities as well than, than whatever getaway artist can provide you. That enhanced arc soul is strong, but because that's the only thing it can really get you, it, it's not enough of a trade-off, um, especially when amplify is also quite easy to get as well. So becoming instantly amplified isn't really as special Um as some of the other benefits that, that Fallen Sunstar gives you, and certainly the list of benefits that Crown gives you. Nothing Manacles is in a bit of a different situation because it's a different type of grenade, and it buffs a very specific type of grenade. It was uh, the Scatter Grenade, and <laughs> of course, we've really since it first came out, it was running into the issue where um, those those charges of the Scatter Grenade would kind of collide with one another and, and detonate before they even reached an enemy. So the Nothing Manacles kind of suffers from the fact that Scatter Grenade itself had issues for a long time, and I think that's why people just don't use it. But that's been fixed now. They worked on the tracking for Scatter Grenades, and so I don't know. Um, is it... I, I don't know what to say about it. I think it needs a change. It does not stack with chaos accelerants bonus uh unfortunately and I, I don't know if that's again an issue that maybe scatter grenades themselves that base need to be buffed up i don't know what i could even recommend if there is anything to recommend for nothing manacles but it's it is certainly not helped by the fact that controversy hold is right there and vortex grenades are just so strong across both pve and pvp um 
I almost think that uh, Vortex Grenades would have to be brought down, or Controverse itself would have to be brought down for me to even consider Nothing Manacles. Not that I want that to happen, but um, ideally, of course, some, some sort of buff to Scatter Grenades would be great. We know that they're taking a look at underutilized grenades. I don't know if scatter grenades is going to be one of those options, but it could be the case with some of these ability tweaks that are coming uh, in the pipeline. Maybe nothing manacles gets uh, a bit more usage or, or maybe a better reason to run it over to controversy holds, but at the point at this point in time, yeah, don't really think there's a reason to use nothing manacles when controversy and verities exist. But on the whole, yeah, I mean, Warlocks have some really great options when it comes to grenade exotics um, to the point that, you know, I don't necessarily want more. I mean, I'll, I guess I would take a, a strand-based grenade exotic, but Swarmers kind of covers that because, uh, you know, our thing, of course, is Threadlings, and Swarmers deals with Threadlings, giving you more Threadlings, and I don't really know what a Threadling grenade-based exotic armor that would would be like when swarmers is already right there so i don't know like i think warlocks are in a pretty good place right now if if they wanted to put out more exotic armors for different grenade types again as a way to kind of get people into using the other types i think that would be i'd be interested in to see what they pick but um it, it would of course then depend on the viability of that grenade type but overall i'm quite happy with the warlock grenade options i certainly think there's a lot of strong ones um, I know that new players, when they complete the exotic quest for Ikora, you can get a hold of Controverse. Um, that's one of the options that you can go for. And then I think they also give you Crown of Tempest, which is more of just a general ability exotic. Again, I think those are quite strong. Um, if I were to tell a new player what to go for, Osmeomancy would be up there for sure. It's just so strong for stasis uh, if they have access to stasis. But yeah, uh, there's there's some juicers here. A very, very strong list of exotics centered around grenades for Warlocks. That's, that's really all I have to say. Um, and if we get more, sweet. All right, uh, those are kind of our thoughts on super exotics, melee exotics, grenade exotics. We don't have a list here for like exotics that deal with class abilities because I think those are quite varied uh, from, mm -hmm. from class to class, but also within the class itself. Um, I don't think we're going to be talking too much about like stompies compared to <laughs> radiant dance machines because there's whole whole lot of other, other factors to consider with the viability of those uh, even within one side of the sandbox. But we did have uh, kind of as a last piece here, a curated list of exotics that we've broken up into three tiers of like the current hotness, right? Something that doesn't need a lot of changes, maybe even some slight nerfs if it's too hot. Then below that, just the average kind of maybe, maybe a little bit of loving, but are, are just fine without too much of a, a major change. And then of course the, the bad, the bad exotics, the stuff that needs attention here. These are not exotics that we've tried to make this list of stuff that we haven't talked about earlier in the episode here this is kind of the other stuff here again we're not going to go through every single exotic this is just stuff that we've kind of called to attention that stand out to the three of us for our respective classes so without further ado um, we're going to start with the three classes and our current hotness what do we consider to be the cream of the crop here i'm going to pass you back to court for the hunters yeah, starting off with a absolute banger, and that's Assassin's Cowl. Uh, one of the best hunter exotics out there. Probably one of uh, the best exotics across all three classes. Uh, it's such a powerfully potent um, exotic in any type of content, uh, whether that's low, middling, or upper end. Uh, so, you know, just on powered melee kill, or if you're doing a finisher, you get void invisibility. And you get some health back. Pretty simple, but uh, I think just being able to go invis uh, on demand and getting like either a little bit of your health back or the entirety of your health back if it's a, a boss or a mini boss, uh, it's yeah, it's one of just one of the best exotics. Uh, I I will always recommend it. And uh, is it too hot? I'm not qualified to say too much about it um i think it's in a really good spot but uh, i wouldn't go too far to say uh, it's too hot uh next up is one of my personal favorites Joe falcons hauberk uh that kind of launched really well yeah it did get the kind of flip between uh, you no longer get the 
35% damage increase on demand uh, when you come out in Viz. Uh, you now get that when you do a finisher. Uh, you instead get volatile rounds. So very easy to get uh, volatility uh, on a hunter. Uh, but uh, yeah, very solid chest plate. Uh, I always kind of prefer that over our next choice here. Uh, well, it's not my personal favourite, I absolutely acknowledge it is one of the, the best sort of invis and kind of survivability uh, for team play, and that's Omnioculus. Uh, just really solid 50% damage uh, resistance when invis. Uh, you can obviously make other players invis, get that DR as well, and you get your, uh, your smoke bomb back as well if you get two players invis. Uh, with Trapper's Ambush, or if you're just throwing a smoke bomb, uh, an Invis smoke bomb, you'll get that back. Uh, and then one of the, just the most, like, pretty much basic uh, uh, leg armor, but also really potent for just, you know, running around. It's just one of those really classic uh, uh, exotic armor, and that's Frosty's, uh, like... Uh, something i've always recommended for for passive play if i'm not really focusing on a specific exotic just being able to get your your grenade and melee regen uh, up faster for just merely running around is just such a like a great uh, exotic i was almost kind of not wanting to put this into this list because it's just so passive it's not it doesn't really have a specific draw it's not like assassin's cow where you get your health back and in invis and it's not like uh on the oculus where it's again another invis type exotic but it's just one of those things that works behind the scenes it does your taxes for you and you just it just <laughs> does its job um Titans, what are the the hotness exotics, uh, Saint? Yeah, the the frosties I always seen is like the hunter's heart of inmost light, you know, um, which is funny. Yeah, I I I try to pick one out here for like each class. I'm thinking about like the builds that I'm running right now, um, and I think that we I've, I've got a pretty good list here, um, and I'm not going to talk about these a ton. I'm I'm definitely going to talk more about our bad exotics, the ones I want to see worked up, but. Um, here we've got, you know, Curious, just double damage on the burst damage super and an overshield. I mean, it's it's stayed in the DPS meta for a long time. Uh, Heart of the Most Light for Void um, is something I really enjoy just for the way that flows together, especially you pair that with something like Offensive Bulwark, and it's uh, seen how much uptime you can have on your abilities in that class. Uh, Horfrost Z for Stasis, um, especially now that we have kind of our elemental charge perks and things like that are back in the game, I definitely think Horfrost is right back in its place as like one of the best uh, or, or the best Stasis exotic you can run in your Stasis Titan IMO. Uh, Syntheseps uh, and Phoenix Cradle, honestly, for Solar. I think that Phoenix Cradle is the one on this list that's probably like the most uh, underrated or just like the most slept on, whatever you want to call it, within PvE. Um, but the amount of benefit it gives you, it, it doubles the duration of Soul Invictus, which is the buff you get when you're standing in a sunspot, and gives it to your allies. Um, so you're getting like... Uh, I think it's double or like a hundred percent increase to your melee regeneration rate. And you're also getting restoration times one uh, and the ability to have that up for so long. And then also the ability to spread that to your team because it's so easy to create so many sunspots and you're super, you can create them on demand and throw them where you want to. Um, it's just really good. It, it's such a good offensive defensive combo there. And I, I don't think, um, I think that because it's not always as necessary that we have so much defense that that one's a little bit uh, just not quite as used. And then obviously a Bant Leap. I mean, the ability to trigger the strongest uh, passive defensive buff in the game by just suspending something when you have so much access to suspend uh, your, your barricade and your grenade can both proc this and then you have orbs of power in between when you don't have one of those up so a band leap is the kind of a thing that can pretty much just guarantee that you have woven mail active uh, just all the time and, and it's so ridiculously strong that that access to that uptime is just crazy um, yeah I don't know those are those are my top picks for titans uh, Impetus, what about you? Oh, we got some hotness, baby. Um, I'll kick us off with uh, the kind of raid 
option here. Luna Faction boots, what what you put down when you're in your well, now that you no longer have Starfire Protocol, that boost to reload speed is a game changer for you and your fire team, honestly. But um, I love that starting this season, we've actually got a pretty interesting piece of competition here for all of our divinity... Um, People, I'm not going to say the actual term that we like to call them, but uh, yeah, the divinity lovers amongst us. We've got Cenotaph Mask. That's going to be, I think, an excellent substitution if you're, you know, if you've already got a Luna Faction person on the fire team or you don't really, everyone's got a good reload option there. You know, having the ability to steadily reload a portion of your equipped trace rifles magazine from reserves for divinity, I mean, goodness sakes, that, that saves you that horrible period. The, really, the one weakness of divinity is you got to take the bubble off to re while you're reloading the gun, you know? Um, so having an exotic that can bypass that seems like a totally worthwhile trade-off considering uh, the fact that everyone still pretty much uses divinity for a ton of their boss fights here. Um, so those are my two there kind of for raids. Um Transversive steps, I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people probably forget about this exotic, but the ability to simply bypass the reload speed stat on all of your weapons, uh, to ignore reload perks outside of maybe very niche options, you know, in your columns three and four on all your weapons is, is pretty incredible. Um, yes, there are going to be times when you do need to uh, maybe have a reload perk for some kind of benefit, but just for a general play option that is a very strong effect i've got somebody in my clan who's a, a speed runner a low manner this is the only exotic he's ever worn he does not use any other exotic on warlock he is t-steps only he's got all the all the ornaments for it he loves them to death and uh yeah I, I can't lie looking at his performance he's he's an excellent excellent player and it's because he never has to reload his weapons basically is, is the big reason for it and it's super helpful for speed running which i know is not the target audience for this podcast but it it has its uses is what i will say the next one will be Nezarek Sin. Um, I personally prefer Controverse, but I, again, it's one of those situations where I can't deny people do love the purple flavor. They love getting their void kills and love getting their void abilities back, and Nezarek Sin just delivers on that so much. Same thing with Fallen Sunstar. I think that's kind of a, a similar flavor of exotic there. Um, the ability to profit so much off of those Ionic Traces, be able to generate so many Ionic Traces when you're using... Uh, Cold Heart in particular is really, really strong, and I think the reason why Fallen Sunstar edges out Crown of Tempest. Now, I put Aeon Souls in my list. I noticed that Court and Saint did not put uh, the Aeon Gauntlets mm. for their respective classes. I'm curious to know, fellas. I don't actually see Aeons anywhere in your in your list here for average or bad. What? How do we feel about Aeons? Because I think they're hot. I think they definitely have a very strong use case. Do you guys not see that? Is that just something that you forgot to put on there? What, how do you guys feel about Aeons for your respective classes? Yeah, it's just like back of my mind. There's just so there's just a constant in the GM build conversation. Um, still, still very good. Still GM meta, absolutely. Still, still raid meta sometimes too, especially on day ones when you're trying to burn through as much heavy as possible in a in a mm -hmm. DPS space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much much the same for me with Frosties. It's kind of in its own category. Uh where yeah, no, I completely agree. They are powerful. Uh I think they, they do their job, but uh uh it it's not that I I forgot about them and it's not that I didn't want to rank them. It's just that yeah, they're they're just a really great subset of exotics that uh they're almost kind of their own thing. Uh hmm. but yeah, no. I, I I agree. They are really good. I remember vividly uh, doing War Priest Challenge, and you know you gotta you you need to be shooting off like fifteen linear fusion shots per damage phase, and uh, if you want to sustain that, like you you pretty much have to have two people running uh, aeons, like one on each side of the arena, and there's other you know there's been other scenarios like that, many raid races where it's like you need to expend so much ammo in these DPS phases, um, or you know when it comes to like speeding through GMs. Um, you need to be expending so much heavy ammo to burst down these champions if you want to get these fast clears that, like, you just have to have it. You just have to have them. And, and that's, like, the whole combo, which is, um, I don't know, strange, but a necessary part of the ammo economy that we find ourselves in in the game. All right. Uh, we we kind of move on a little bit here for our average exotics. Our exotics that are they're fine. You know, they don't, they don't really need... Uh, they don't need 
too much of a buff, but they're also not the best thing in the world. Uh, maybe you could get a little bit of a buff. Um, you know, I mentioned jokingly, I, I, you know, it's funny, I put Curious in the top, but also, like, I would say that Curious could get, like, a passive buff to make it more than just, like, that super exotic, um, you know, court. What would you want to see, uh, you know, what do you, what do you see kind of just hanging out in the middle of the pack here for some, some Hunter exotics? Yeah, kind of ties back to what I was talking about with some of the kind of uh, super exotics and melee and grenade exotics where... Like they just need an additional passive ability, uh, but specifically I've listed here uh, again. I, I've kind of put these as above average rather than like they don't need too much of a change. They're 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 just fine as they are. Uh, the grabbed and forfeit is one I've put here. Might be a bit of a like oh a bit of a shock, but in in a world of uh, your falcons and omnioculus, it has been pushed out a little bit, but it's still perfectly okay, uh, especially in PVE. Um, four hundred percent additional base melee regenerate, so you can get your your uh, smoke bombs back faster, uh, and that effect increases uh, with uh, as, as a bonus uh, to total. To a total of 600% and 800% uh, if there's more enemies nearby. So it's kind of got that Syntheseps uh, kind of vibe. And then you get 100, plus 100 recovery and plus 100 reload speed when you're uh, invisible as well. So uh, it, it does have a lot going for it. But um, if you want to play into the whole Void invisibility, that's your exotic. But it's it's not really for me. Uh, next up is Lucky Pants. This might be a little bit of a surprise. But again, it's not something I really play into uh, i acknowledge it's it's one of the best kind of weapon synergistic uh for at least for hand cannons uh for damage uh, completely great exotic but outside of that it's kind of pretty kind of average in terms of it just feels a bit basic uh but yeah completely acknowledge it's a really great and fun exotic uh, again it's just above average for for my vibes and then lastly okay it might be a little bit of a surprise here i have been enjoying triton vice um i think it could do with a smidge more kind of potency and efficacy um but it's no by by no means a bad exotic uh, and saying you were alluding to the class exotic uh, sorry, the class glaive exotics earlier mm -hmm. on in the episode. Um, I'm kind of wondering how that will play with Edge of uh, Concurrence, uh, just vibing with that. But uh, I have been using that with Edge of Concurrence and other glaives and Winter's Bite, which is a lot of fun. Get uh, six in the magazine, get those six stasis turrets uh, up in there. It's a lot of fun. Uh Saint, uh, what, what's your kind of average, kind of your your kind of vibing with for uh, yeah. the Titan Exotics? I mean, we got you know Precious Scars. It's, it's fine. That's pretty good. Laurely Splendor at this point, I feel like is is great for survivability. But there's other things I would choose over it. Um, you know, like Lion Rampant, really fun pair of boots, kind of doing their own thing. Uh, Ash and Wake again, really fun to use. Um, kind of has its own little lane there. Camdus Ridge Lance Cap is one that I is fine. I would like to see get buffed up a little bit, um, and, and I just think that it's a it's, it's just a bit of a strange one. Um, and then the effect that it does with the Diamond Lances is a bit weird. Uh, even though it's pretty good, and I like Diamond Lances like as a as a tool in the Stasis Sandbox. Um, you know, no backup plans is another exotic that I would say is really. You know, it may not be meta, but like it's good and it's really fun to use. Um, and I, I think that, that we could keep that going there. Um, I would also say that there are some things that just kind of suffer because of the of how they work and the tiers that they're effective at. Um, and, you know, like insurmountable skull fort definitely comes to mind. Um, and like Doom Marchers is really fun to use with like throwing hammer. Um, but just like kind of there, there's a point of challenge in the game where they're they they start to fall off a little bit because of their they're meant to just handle a little bit of smaller things maybe not such a, a level deficit kind of a situation um but yeah i mean that's where i'm at we got we got a pretty good shake of exotics in here um and just what, what about you before we before we get into our needs some attention category here uh what, what's what's in the middle of the pack maybe pretty good uh for the for the warlocks 
Yeah, I mean, again, these are, I would say these are all above average, but I just don't use them because there are better options, so I would like to see a little bit of a change. Crown of Tempest falls into this category. Um, I just think Fallen Sunstar is easier to proc for for pretty much the same effect. Um, Crown is great for, for jolting. Um, really, really, you can do some really good ad clear, but that, that becomes harder and harder to do at higher difficulties, and so that's why I would swap to Fallen Sunstar when I'm doing raids, dungeons, nightfalls uh, at that difficulty. I have another world, again, much like Frosties, much like Hoyle, kind of like, you know, if, if you could assign a baby warlock their very first exotic armor, I'd probably give them I have another world, you know, just faster ability cooldowns was kind of our our default stasis exotic at that time for, for almost a year until Osmiomancy dropped. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. I'm not sure Bungie will probably ever touch it just based on the nature of the exotic, but it would be nice to see a little bit of, a little bit of love to Eye of Another World. Um, definitely a, a better ornament, that's for sure. Thing is ugly to look at. <laughs> Seeking Filaments, I think, is just a victim of the changes to the sandbox. Um, and the fact that we have a host of subclass for herbs that can stun champions now. Um, it used to be kind of one of the better options for stunning overloads, but now we have some truly top tier options that don't require an exotic armor piece or me casting my rift. And I think that is a, you know, just kind of a, a shame because it was a really good exotic for what it wanted to do, but not, uh, not quite as strong, not quite as necessary now. Swarmers, I put Swarmers in here simply because of the strength of Threadlings, how lethal they are. I know that they're getting buffed. It could be the case that this gets buffed up to uh, the hotness level with the buff to Threadlings, but I want to put them right here just because they are strong. Only as, they are only as strong as Threadlings, and Threadlings do need a little bit of love right now, and Bungie's aware of that. Last one I have on my list here, Boots of the Assembler. Um, yeah, I think Lunafaction and Cenotaph Mask are just, just better options to have in a, a boss scenario. The fact that you need to kind of step in and out of the rift for the Seekers, the Noble Seekers, to seek out your allies is a lot to ask. Um, again, during a damage phase, if you want to get that healing while you're you're wailing on a boss, you know, you're already trying to keep track of a boss as they're moving around. So for you to also be rotating to, to kind of make sure that you have line of sight on the boss and you're not, you know, blocking your fire team, but then also you need to be aware of where the rift is so that the seekers can come in and heal you while you're doing damage. That's too much. That's too much work. Um, so I'd like to see some sort of tweak to the nature of the seekers. If it could just be the case that you run through the rift once and then for a period of time, they'll they'll seek it out long. It's longer than five seconds, I should say. Um, that would be, I think, maybe a little bit more forgiving, and that would make the exotic a little bit stronger. But again, it is still strong. The health is nice. It's certainly a viable option, but um, it's not hot. It's not hotness. It's just average right now. That's the last one I had on my list. Now we're going to get into the bad exotics. I don't, hopefully, <laughs> we're trying to be mindful of how long we've been going here. Hopefully we won't spend too much time talking about these, but these are the exotics that we've selected that just need a lot of attention uh, for various reasons. So without further ado, I'll pass you back to court here for the hunter exotics. Yeah, I've only got three here because I've kind of alluded to a few of them in the previous topics, like Super, Melee, and Grenade. But uh, the three I've got here are Blight Rangers, the problem of the big one. Uh, it's one of these exotics on paper, it looks like, oh my god, this looks great. Like, But in practice, it just it doesn't work. And it's such a shame because it's such a, a really good-looking exotic. It's dead on arrival, and it's not really been touched since then. It's been mm. buggy. It's not working properly. It's just ugh, just one of these exotics. Again, if you've rolled that into um, uh, into Raiju's harness, I would probably not notice. <laughs> uh, and it's just one of those reasons why I, I wanted to bring up the whole uh, if we consolidated, consolidated a lot of these exotics into each other um, because there is some overlap and that was the big two that I wanted to bring up but uh, yeah Blight Ranger just needs some love I don't know what they can do with it just that's it's 650% increased damage on the reflect, reflected projectiles when you're blocking but it, it just doesn't add up to anything it's a real shame considering like the block damage is like what, two two damage or something like that so it's <laughs> you're not doing a lot of increase regardless how how much it is 
Uh, I already talked about Celestial Nighthawk, but again, it's just one of these things that would need a little bit more of a passive ability. Um, maybe even a slight damage increase as well. I know folks, you know, something like uh, Star Scales has a power crit Celestial Nighthawk out of existence. Um, and, you know, Seahawk is just... It's just not quite there. Uh, Golden Gun is still a very good kind of damage super uh, for like single target damage, but uh, you know it, it, it's it exists in a Blade Barrage and Starrier Scales and all other you know Gathering Storm uh, uh, sandbox. Uh, it's just not. It's not it. Really needs some attention just to uplift it. Uh, I see a lot of suggestions of uh, if we make it into. Um, uh, golden gun now penetrates uh barrier champions shields um might need a little bit more on top of that because you only get one shot with celestial nighthawk but uh something like that would be a nice uh, little change um finally bombardiers i was kind of hoping this would get the um chromatic fire treatment it sort of has already and it was one of my top or one of my top questions uh that i wanted to speak to rodney about when we had him on but again we didn't want to go too much down the rabbit hole of specific exotics uh but currently um bombardiers doesn't quite interact with a lot of the subclass um synergies uh, it does a type of arc blindness but it's not actually arc blind uh it it does um, let me just load up the, uh, yeah, so slow is, it's not technically a slow stack, it's its own thing, it does sever, which is to say it's not that, it doesn't, I don't really vibe with sever for, uh, for strand as much as other, uh, subclass perks. Um, it does do 40 scorch or 60 if you've got, uh, the additional fragment, uh, and then it does a type of suppression, but it's not void suppression. So it's it's just this really weird situation now uh, here with bombardiers, where it needs some serious, uh, like chromatic fire treatment would be a great like um, uh, ballpark, a great aiming towards uh, to to uplift it. Uh, but yeah, it's just one of the really strange ex exotics, and I've really wanted to make it, make it work, uh, especially in uh, in these activities which are becoming a lot more ad dense. Um, and to send off a literally called parting gift is the uh, the exotic name, uh, and that's the bomb when you dodge. Uh, but it half of the things just don't work with your subclasses, and it's just really just not it's not uh, impressive at all. So. That is my uh, list of bad exotics. Uh, Titans, how are we vibing? Yeah, I talked about uh, Armamentarium earlier. I uh, talked about, I kind of touched on Kefri's Horn. Kefri's Horn just needs to do more damage for what it is uh, or needs to have more of a cooldown on my barricade for that to be viable. A um, couple other ones I want to touch on. Hallifier Heart um, is good, but it's a real benefit that you're going to see is too dependent on having your super up and then not using your super, which is just a weird, um, like kind of place to be in, uh, in my mind. And I'm not just not drawn to that. And I don't think it's passive is nearly strong enough to compete with oil. So, uh, you know, Hellfire Heart is only for solar and it's still not strong enough compared to oil that you can work for any class. Um, the other couple I want to mention here, uh, Mask of the Quiet One. Mask of the Quiet One has just really gotten just power crept way out, and it's just not nearly strong enough for the effect that it is um, advertising or or supposed to have. Um, you know, to give like a little bit of context here, uh, when you're at critical health, uh, weapon kills heal you, um, and when you are taking damage. Uh, you get a little bit of a passive cooldown boost to your abilities, but neither of those, like those are both very interesting benefits. Um, but neither of them are strong enough to, to warrant using this exotic slot or using this in your exotic slot. Um, and then the last one I want to mention is Crest of Alpha Loop P, which is another interesting exotic. Uh, when you cast your barricade, you get a 60 or 120 health point bump to anybody that's within 12 meters of you within line of sight. Um, 
You also generate more powerful, you generate an additional orb and they give a little bit more super energy to your allies. So it's like kind of like a super exotic, but but it's not really. And the health bump that it's giving, you can get 70 you know, HP just from picking up an orb off the ground. Um, maybe, I, I think that if you cranked up the, uh, maybe the amount of health on this, or if it could be, the uh the radius if this is a really big radius a 20 something meter radius on the health bump that could be really nice um but i i just don't think that it's quite enough uh to to again to to be used on your exotic slot there just because of the benefits that it give you um maybe you could even have a buff here where when you pick up an orb of power you're also granting uh those effects to those around you within 12 meters you know that that could be a really nice one where you're getting this kind of passive benefit every time I pick up an orb, uh, my teammates are also getting the, um, you know, the, the grenade energy and, and a little bit of a health bump that I just got myself or, or something like that. And I, I like the idea of being able to help and heal your teammates is good, but it just needs more benefit. Uh, Impetus closing us out here. What, what, what warlock exotics need some juice? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about Starfire anymore. Um, that's definitely the number one on my list. But some two other ones, I got uh, two helmets that I want to talk about. Astrocyte Verse, which I think most people probably assume is a, a PvP one. But, it, I mean, it's you could use it in either one. I just uh, blink further and more frequently. It did get a change recently, so the, the weapon readies quickly out of blink and, and radar remains up, but then it also helps with your airborne effect in the stat. Again, probably more of a PvP one now, but I just, I don't know. I wish that could have... Blink is such a cool ability, I would love to see some sort of PvE integration with it, some some reason to run Blink in PvE, so I, I hope that Astrocyte did get some sort of attention, but the big one I just don't understand at all is Apotheosis Veil. Um... I guess this is a super exotic that I, I, but it's not, the the weird part is like it has that second option where nearby allies recharge class abilities faster when you pop your, when you activate your super. I'd love to see this become a little bit more of a support exotic for, for the helmet. I think that would be a little bit more interesting. I just wish that the, the activating your super cost was tweaked in some way because I think immediately regenerating health melee grenade and rift energy is a cool idea for a super, but it's not doing it for me right now. It's just way too high of a cost. I don't understand it. You're not even really doing anything for your super besides getting health back because a lot of your abilities do recharge quickly while you're in super or, or immediately recharge while you're in super. So, um, I'd like to see something either a little bit more specific or just kicking that super activation cost out the window entirely and picking some other trigger. Uh, that's kind of my option. Cause right now, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just a bad exotic, but those are my two. Those are the only ones I want to talk about. Uh, we'd like to see a little bit of attention. You guys have brought up some great ones. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys, uh, listening have some, some pretty interesting ones to, uh, to, to pick apart and, and maybe come back to us with a counter, or if you agree, let us know here. Uh, looking at the time, I don't think we'll have uh, a chance to get into mods. We'll save that for a separate one here. Um, we did include legendary armor that really is it's just artifice armor. And then, you know, the non artifice armor that does have an extra perk, which is something that they started, I think with, uh, shortly after witch queen. How do you guys feel about legendary armor, you know, in a nutshell real quick, like a one sentence thought. I wish I could focus secondary stats. <laughs> um, that's my one sentence PS, uh, artifice armor still really good at rounding out uh build sets and i think that if you i'm not sure i've heard that the drops are not as good as they used to be for general stat averages and if that's true that hurts a little bit but i need to do more research on that before i make a firm stance yeah i don't have much more to add to what saint said there other than kind of linking back into exotic armor i kind of wish there was a way to get artifice slot for exotic armor um, I think that's uh, it, it. It would need to cost something. I absolutely need to like have some sort of cost sink. Uh, but uh, I, sometimes I have to uh, leave behind an exotic piece of armor, so I've got perfect stats, uh, which is 
Uh, it's kind of, you know, that's uh, first world problems when it comes to being a, a Destiny veteran who has access to all these exotics and all these, uh, you know, Arvis armor that I can get, like, triple or quadruple stats, but uh, I, I do kind of wish uh, uh, Artifice slot was available on exotic armor. All right. I don't have a whole lot to add on to either of those. That is definitely a, a bold claim there, Gordon. I'm not sure if I can go with you on that one, but I, I understand the frustration for sure. Um, yeah, legendary armor. I hope they keep experimenting. I think the Solstice uh-huh. thing is really cool, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much all. That's my one sentence thing there is. I hope, yeah, in the, in the vein of saying, I hope we get to see some more focusing options show up for legendary armor. But that will wrap things up for episode 71 so thank you so much for listening we of course want to thank our audio engineer autodidactos for his continued work on the show helping us sound the best we possibly can next week we'll be talking about solstice as that lands the new solstice weapons the reprise solstice weapons and potentially the ability sandbox or we might also put in our discussion of the armor mods since we weren't able to do that this episode Please let us know what you think about the state of exotic and legendary armor in Destiny 2. We're all happy to chat with you guys on social media. And speaking of social media, my name is Impetus. You can find me by that name in Discord and in Destiny. And as Impetus always on Twitter, Court, where can our listeners find you? Yep, you can find me on uh, Twitter, various other uh, social media websites as Court Projects. Same name over on Discord on the Destiny Massive Breakdowns server. Uh, You can also find my infographics and various other spreadsheets and applications to enhance your Destiny experience over on the Destiny Massive Breakdowns website. Uh, Saint, where can we find you? Yep, my name is Saint Kabir. You can find me by Saint underscore Kabir on Twitter and Discord. And be sure to check out the at Massive Breakdowns Twitter for all updates on the show, new episodes, topics, and the future of any kind of events and things like that. Thanks for listening to another episode of PVE.